Hello, welcome to session four of the Lorford campaign. Um, when we last left our heroes, they were in a gold mine um, investigating a an uncovered temple to a god of Bashaba, queen of uh, goddess of bad luck. Um, Gorvis, uh, the dwarven miner, he had, who runs it, the mine, he had hired them to find out what happened to the last party who went in there. And they went in there because the miners that uncovered this symbol to Bashaba believed that it was bad luck and uh, a curse. They wanted nothing to do with it. So he hired a set of adventurers to send in there to clear it out and assure his workers that there was no dangers or problems. And um, they went in there and within like a minute, the tunnel collapsed behind them and the miners were like, fuck this, told you, and they got out of there. So work has largely shut down at the mine and he hired you to go in there, do what the first party was hired to do and find what happened, find out what happened to them. Um, you entered through a, a sunken hallway um, that had some vines in it that grasped at you and uh, some odd objects at the bottom that you speculated could, could be bones. Um, you found some, when you emerged from that, you found uh, a bit of a twisting passages, um, misleading or deceptive areas talking about uh, Bashaba and uh, things to sort of look for in the dungeon. Um, tenants of her following. I'll, uh, I can even read you a passage you came across. You found a tome. It was actually a, a carving of a tome on a pedestal, a stone pedestal. And it said, Fortune be to Bashaba. To ignore her is to dare misfortune. The road to guidance is fraught with calamity. The wizened will pass. Others will suffer to learn. Understand the lessons of her ways. Blessings await the worthy. Mishap awaits the fool. Fortune be to Bashaba. You found some old traps that uh, had been long set off, including bits of skeleton. You found a cage where it seemed that the previous adventuring party had gone in, a cage trap had come down, and being very old, it had brought down much of the rock with it. However, the bars to this cage were bent wide, suggesting that uh, whoever was trapped inside managed to escape. You have traveled through, let's say, several hallways and rooms in this dungeon. You found a maze of magical mirrors, which you uh, finally made your way through. Currently, uh, having passed through the last of these mirrors, the party stands on a landing, um, uh, which leads to a long staircase running down. Uh, it is dimly lit from above. The ceiling is glowing slightly, uh, providing dim light. Another thing you've noticed throughout this dungeon is that in several places, the walls or ceilings seem to have been um, poked through, pushed through as if by rock, pressured, crushing in on it. Um, on the wall beside you, there are six vertical parallel uh, scratch marks in the wall. So you're on this landing. It's about 10 by 10. There's a staircase running down, which narrows to about six feet wide. There's some scratch marks in the wall. I'm going to go through the players left to right. I'm going to have you tell me a little bit about yourself. And then tell me also about your character, what they're thinking, uh, what they feel about current events what's currently going on, that sort of thing. So I'm going to start with Andre. Um, I play Denver Damaris. He is one of the five forest elves in charge of the forest regions of the area. And he has, uh, <clears throat> he has found employment with his friend Yabagorn um, here in this particular party. And he has followed um, this halfling whom seems to get him some work from time to time, Lindell. Uh, and 
as as the swampers said, they find themselves in a dungeon now, contending with the with the concerns that they have before them. And Denver is actually a little bit uh, embarrassed and frustrated because they had such difficulty getting out of what now he knows to be a quite simple puzzle. Um, but at this point in time, he's just more concerned about delving deeper into the ground because um, he is unsure how far deep this temple goes and his primary concern is to protect the small ones uh in the party while yambagorn um heads up the, the the front of the party so he's just looking carefully around and trying to make sure uh that no one either ambushes them or there's no tr no more traps or puzzles that they can uh, that will undo their <laughs> their their uh their mission could be there are. Um, I'll give you a little hint to you might want to think about the original reason you were sent out from the five forests. Um, with that cryptic bit of advice, I'm going to jump over to Dennis who's playing Snowball. I'll just quickly say that Aaron who's playing Lindell uh, couldn't be with us today. He had to work at the last minute. Snowball is uh, a dragonborn cleric slash bodyguard of uh, Lindell, Aaron's character. Um, she's in this because Lindell had, um, had a, has a knack for doing stuff like this. So that's her reason for being her. Um, she's not too keen on dungeon crawling. And um, all she can remember is, uh, is go south, go south, go south, go south. It seems to resonate in her mind. Now they're standing dissolution after all the teleportations. Okay, excellent. So that uh, takes us over to John. Uh, now, John, I think left this spell book behind, but he still has all his ingredients and stuff like that. I, uh, conceded that you would have waterproof containers so they wouldn't get destroyed and stuff like that. So tell us about your character and what you feel about what's going on. <clears throat> I'm playing Dolan Orath the second, um, the greatest wizard to ever known to man, elf, orc, halfling, gnome, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Um, I find myself with this group mostly um, because they need my arcane knowledge. They lack any skill in that manner, and pretty much they're just a bunch of lungheads that slam against things to break them, uh, to get through them, where I try to work around them. Inside, though, I'm A, feeling completely naked, since my belt pouch and my fighting stick and my dagger and my spell components are all I have on me, since I've left everything so it wouldn't get wet in the other room. Um... <laughs> which is making me feel a little crazy. Uh, and as my spell of uh, Alter Self has worn off, my skin now is pimply from being cold and chilled in this wet, cold dungeon under the ground. And he's trying to keep a positive look outlook, but generally being um, more upset and uh, sad that he can't do anything um, about his current situation. That's about it for now. Okay, and last but not least, we have Yamagorn, who's looking tough and imposing in his big armor. Okay, so as Rob said, I'm playing Yamagorn, the half-orc paladin, follower of the ways of Miliki, goddess of nature, etc., growing things. I have a friendship forged with Danva, which is forged many years ago, as the unhappy product of a, of a union betwixt Orc and Elf, which, as you'd imagine, didn't happen under salubrious circumstances. My character was somewhat disfavoured by the Elves and was to have been killed, if not for Danva, and that was the start of our friendship. I've been drawn in onto this potentially falls errand by Danva's involvement, and we now find ourselves trying to track down a, a man's missing wife at some point later on. But for now, we're trying to find these hapless adventurers in this temple of Bathsheba. Yambagorn is a, a little bemused at the moment since he doesn't really understand why you'd want to put a prison of stone effectively around 
a, a divinity or a, a place where you'd worship the divine. Uh, as a follower of Maliki, he sort of expected that all of the races would have the large open spaces, the broad towering forest canopies, etc., that form the, the holy places of Maliki. Instead, we've got this damp, shitty, stony, horrible underground place lit only by this sort of dim glowing radiance from the ceiling, along with all these strange devices that seem to have been set up by the clergy there to stop people from getting in, which has sort of got Yambagorn thinking, well, to be honest, their, their goddess can't be that mighty if this is what they've got to rely on stopping unbelievers and dangerous people from getting in. But that's partly borne out by his frustration because he's a he's a straightforward person. He he likes to call a sword a sword. He, he doesn't believe in things that you can't sort of meet head on and deal with. He's, he's very much a victim of his half-orc heritage in that respect. So he's sort of trying to show a strong sort of leading from the front aspect, as Danvers said, but he's sort of a bit on the back foot because he's like, I don't really understand this place. A lot of it seems to be passing me by. So he's sort of thinking, well, if I just forge forwards, let the others deal with this weird, like, puzzly sort of stuff that's going on we can get out we can all go and have a drink then we can like get on with something to which my talents are more suited for excellent okay so as we start the five of you are a little bit crowded together on this 10 by 10 landing uh, it's dimly lit as i said a long stone staircase descends into darkness there are um six furrows scratches roughly parallel um, on the wall to your left. I'm going to have a, a closer look at the scratches, see if I can work out what they were made of. Is there any sort of, are they part of like a, a trigger mechanism or anything like that? I'll be looking for any sort of cracks around them, that sort of thing. Sure. So roll me an investigation check, please. Okay. Probably not with that roll. That's a five. So this would be a knowledge roll. Um, and I'm, I give out an, an amount of knowledge sort of equal to the roll. So I will tell you for a five, I'll tell you, there are numerous little cracks and um, chunks of rock missing uh, of the original stone structure missing from the rock pressing in. These markings are clearly not that. Some outside force made them in this wall. Master Dolan, what do you make of these scratches? Uh, someone has clearly put them here deliberately for some purpose. Um, <clears throat> Dolan, uh, having his hands crossed, uh, keeping really close to himself, kind of shivering, uh, goose pimples running up and down his arms, kind of looks over at Yambagorn. Uh, size and then walks over and will uh, look at those marks that are on the wall. So I rolled a 15 for my investigation. You muted Rob. Sorry, first habit. So they were clearly scratched into this wall by perhaps a dagger. Um, and they're parallel, suggesting uh, like counting. Someone was counting. You know how you make like counting marks? That's the that's what they're suggestive of. Um, <laughs> Dolan turns to Yamagorn. I am not... I'm not quite sure what they are. Uh, looks like someone was trying to count something. Maybe, I, I don't know, the number of times they've come by here. Or, I don't know. It's beyond me. And with what, that, is the, what is this counting you speak of? Some form of arcane ritual or something similar? Uh, Dolan stares blankly at Yambagorn, his mouth agape. I've... It's not important. They don't mean much. We we'll, don't. I. And he kind of just turns his head, walk, shaking, walking away. I don't. I don't understand why I'm with these people. 
<laughs> Excellent. Everybody should have a one point of inspiration, by the way, at least. Is th is there any sort of other way out of the area we're in, or is it just literally a landing wall? You could walk back through the mirror that you came through. It's at your back. There's when there's a long staircase descending into darkness. Well, it seems obvious to me that the the staircase is the only way we can we can go out of here. If this is uh, if this is some form of number, as you suggest, Master Dolan, perhaps it refers to the the number of a step or something similar. <laughs> Dolan actually lifts his head and perks up, looking over here. I'm going, that actually is very quite logical. Perhaps it is a, a, a trap step if we go down on the sixth one or so. Um, either, that, either that or perhaps some form of secret entrance. It seems as though the, the worshippers or the priests here, whatever they call themselves, have a great fondness for misdirection and uh, trickery, which I suppose shouldn't surprise us given the nature of their goddess. That is true, though if the mirror room taught us anything, it's that there has to be a simplicity to these riddles. They can't be as complex that we are making them. Um, I, I say that perhaps we move down the stairs and see where that leads for now and watch that sixth step. Indeed. You can certainly do so, um, but you're going to soon be out of light, so you might want to. Well, I I'm going to sort of start moving first since I've I've got the the dark vision, so it's not so much of a problem for me. And as I sort of as I'm moving down the stairs, obviously not really sort of understanding like the sort of human counting, I'll be sort of like going down a step and like going, is it this one, Dolan? Is it this one, Dolan? Is it this one, Dolan? <laughs> Until I like get to, get to the sixth step, so that I'm like stood on the fifth step, and then I'm just going to very gently sort of like tap it with my sword and sort of tap around it to see if there's any sort of like trap trigger or anything like that on the sixth step. Okay. Before I answer that question, I want to know if anyone else wants to do anything about the light. Not everyone has a vision like yours. Um, because they are weak. <laughs> right. We are weak. And perhaps we have other ways to deal with it. Um, Dolan will uh, channel that green energy that comes through his hand and a green, small, greenish form that appears in his hand. He kind of holds it up. It's green only flame. candlelight. It's not a green flame. Yeah. It's not um, awesomely bright, but at least it gives him some light so he can't won't trip down the staircase. Or something. Okay. So anyone who wants to take advantage of that light is going to have to crowd fairly close. So I, I'm sort of seeing a clump of you guys led by Yamagorn moving down the stairs. Would you say that's accurate? Yes, definitely. Okay. So, uh, Yamagorn, you're going down uh, asking um, Dolan to tell you which uh, step is which count. Um, yeah, so as, you... I make, as I make my way down, I'll be like, as I'm stood on the first step, I'll be like pointing at the second and going, is it this one, until I get to the fifth step. No. Sixth step. No. 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 Okay. This one I made, but I can't. Excellent. Okay, so when you uh, when you apply pressure to the sixth step, there is a blast of cold that comes shooting upwards. You jerk your hand back as this sort of wall of streaming cold shoots upwards from the step to the ceiling. It lasts about two seconds, and then it stops. Given how strong it was, and obviously I felt a sort of like a little bit of like how cold it was because I was nearby. Do I think a it would be cold enough to do damage, and b do I think there'd be enough sort of pressure to like smash someone into the ceiling? Um, yes and no. Yes to the first question. No to the second. Okay, so I sort of like I draw my hand back, sort of like rubbing it where a little bit of the cold's got to it, and turning to you as I say. Be careful if you get caught in that blast, it will it will freeze the skin on your bones. And then I so take a take a step over that step to avoid it. Okay. Everyone else is doing likewise, I assume. Definitely. 
Before okay. I go though, is there a way? Is there any way to um, use my Arcana to gauge how powerful of last that would be? Hmm. I. Uh... Hmm. Okay, I'll tell you what. Make me a perception check. I got a three, so that's not. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> you, you, you see nothing that suggests uh, anything arcane about this, but I suggest doesn't it. Mean it isn't. If, if there's like enough steps, there's like multiples of six. I, I'll be saying. I suggest we also check the next step an equal distance down, in case the traps repeat themselves. It might be every sixth step instead of just the sixths. For a man who can't count to six, you have quite a grasp of mathematics. Sure, we can go down some more. Stay in with me. <laughs> One, two. Yeah, and I'll, I'll literally be going down like three. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the, the stairs continue for uh, quite a ways down. Um, when you get to the 12th step, you notice no effects. And same with the 18th step. Um, eventually, the hallway, and keep in mind this is really dim light, you don't have a long view. Um, in the hallway, in the middle of the stairs, you see um, something poking out of the wall to your left. It looks like um, a spyglass, maybe? But it's like built right into the wall, as if there was a spyglass going through the wall. Well, that just protrudes a few inches. I'll sort of nudge the others and then point at it, looking a little confused. We don't. We don't have any of our equipment on us, correct? You do have, yeah, you got most of your equipment. Um, he just, Dolan, being the paranoid person he is, chose to leave his spellbook behind. You guys Well, I, have, left. I mean, Yeah, because I didn't want to get wet. I didn't know how what, I, how bad we were playing with the okay. environmental effects. I understand, yeah. 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 I, I believe I mean, I'm also maybe you left some room rations room. behind or something, but you, you definitely have the bulk of your equipment. Okay, no problem. Yeah, so I believe I left my armor and shield behind as well. Because I, oh, okay. I couldn't like, go through the narrow, like swimming tunnel, carrying a huge shield and like a big suit of plate on. So. Got it. So, how do you want to respond to this? Um, it's not impeding your progress in any way. It just stands out. There's this little eyeglass that's protruding through the wall. I'm going to like pick up a stone, or if I've got like a bit of something in my pocket, whatever it is, and I'm just going to try and like throw it so it goes like in the path of this lens. To see whether, because I'm, I'm half expecting okay. it to be a trap, because we've just come past some. So I'm like, it's either a spy hole or a trap, and I'm going to throw something towards it, see if it reacts. Okay, okay. We got Yamagorn coming up with a clever idea. All right, so it passes through what you imagine to be like a, an invisible beam, say, coming out from this uh, eyeglass. Um, you do notice, nothing occurs, but you do notice that the eyeglass is slightly tapered um, uh, such that it gets wider as it goes into the wall or, or through the wall. Mm. I have no idea what this could be. Such, such items of glass are not common where I come from. I've seen glass items, of course, but not like this. Yeah, let me describe it a little better. So imagine I'm, I'm like a metallic eyeglass that you would like, like an old, you know, sailing one. And then imagine that most of that was driven through a wall with the last piece sticking out. That's what you're looking for. But is there a glass piece on the end, I guess? Is yeah, well. yeah, and a little like rubber, rubbery kind of, you know, that you'd Perhaps it is some device used by the priests to observe people entering their temple. Be careful if you look in. Hmm. 
I have no wish to put my eye on the end of whatever that is, given the traps we faced currently. But if it heads into the wall, there must be something beyond the wall there. Otherwise, yeah. why have it lead into the wall? Right, or if it's a trap, then there's nothing there, and a spike will come out from the wall and go through our heads. I'm going to sort of like just a little bit further down from where the the lens is. I'm going to sort of like bang on the wall with the hilt of my sword, trying to gauge whether I think there's like a room behind it or something. Uh, can I, <clears throat> Rob? So yeah. if, if it's a spyglass, does it look like um, the end that you put up to your eye, or the other end? Yes, yes. The the narrow end, the the viewing end is sticking out from the wall. You don't see the far end. It goes through the wall. I mean, one would assume it's a viewing device, right? Who are you, who are you asking? Well, she's just saying it out. OK. Well, well yes, I, I would assume so. But again, and I'll say as I'm hammering on the wall, this would be there must be something beyond this wall worth viewing. Otherwise, why have it? Denver okay, looks at then. Denver looks in the spy class. <laughs> okay, so you put your eye up, and you see um, it looks like a, you're looking at a large cavern with a, a flat wall. It's a natural cavern with a flat wall, um, and painted on the flat wall is a very large symbol of Bashaba, maybe thirty feet across. Well, it's definitely a spyglass, and inside is a cavern with Shaba symbols all over it. But now, nothing when, out of the ordinary. When Danver says this to you, the rest of you notice that he's got like a black ring around his eye. I'm just going like, to walk, walk across to the, the eyepiece and like, have a look at it, see if it's got like black stuff like smeared around it. It does. Yeah. I'll, also, I'll point it and go like that to Denver. I'll take out the cloth and start wiping my face. Uh, again, okay. embarrassed. Your, your eye is starting to sting and itch a little. Um, now, he now, just, now he's he an goes, emo elf. Yeah, now he's just, he's more pissed that he's poisoned now, so he just starts wiping it even faster. Starts asking for water. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's it's itching and getting like a little tearing up a lot, that kind of thing. Uh, Snowball will give him a, a water skin. All right, use the water skin to relieve the itching and pain and wipe the emo mask off of my face. Okay, well, it does remove the markings. the The discomfort and itching and water lingers. Um, I'm assuming that Denver's dealt with that in the forest before. Unless he's losing hit points, he'll just tolerate it. Well, okay. Let me, let me take a look. Um, <clears throat> could you have that tiny light closer? Uh, Dawn steps forward. Okay. She so will lean in, lean, uh, hunger down, and look into the elf's eye. Does it look um, like red? Irritated? Yes. Yes. I'm picturing the four of you just crammed together on this narrow staircase, this little eye trying to do some sort of optical surgery. Okay, so based on her medicine knowledge, is this something like, is it just an irritation that will go away on its own, or is it something we should be worried about? Uh, you can make me a medicine check. Okay. I'll find my magical die. Um, 33. 33? Yeah, no. 20 and then three. 23, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you think it's uh, probably temporary. I wouldn't worry about it. It will go away. Precisely. Well, if, if that is uh, a simple foolishness on behalf of these priests, let us continue. It's not surprising okay. you think of a trickster god. Oh, uh, Rob, I'd like to. Sim I'm sorry, John. Go ahead, continue. 
<laughs> that was it. That was just saying. I uh, just, uh, Rob, I, I would like to smell the resin that was on my skin and see if I recognize it as something that a known enemy would use. All right. You can make me uh, guess an investigation roll. All right. That's 1d20 plus 2. Is there any chance I can do likewise using my survival, see if it's like a naturally occurring compound that I have encountered before? Uh, sure. All right, so I rolled a 12. I am an 18 for survival. Okay, so neither of you know exactly what the substance is, but you can determine that it was probably um, made from natural things in nature. Um, but very, very old. You're surprised it still has any potency and maybe even suspect that if it was much fresher, it might have a stronger effect. We should count ourselves lucky that this has lain here for some time. It reminds me of some of the, the tree saps I've seen in the Great Forest, which can cause such irritation, but they they normally have far more severe effects than this. It is obviously laid undisturbed for too long and has lost some of its potency. You should think uh, yourself lucky down there. But, and she looks up at the stair case. We're still looking for those uh, missing adventures, right? Yes. So, either they're lost in that teleport, teleportation thing. Oh, they had to come down here, right? That makes sense. And if they had to come down here, we stand to reason they will have encountered the same stuff that we have, right? The frozen steps. Yes. This thing. I mean, can you drag people? How big are the stairs? I mean, how wide are the stairs? Can you drag people? Or carry people? I'm pretty sure I could have carried at least one or two of you down the stairs. Is that railing? Or is it just like drops into the abyss? I didn't quite catch what you said, Dennis. Is there anything I need anything for me? Uh, is that it. railing on the stairs? Or is it just like no, steps? No, the, then... the, the landing was about 10 feet wide, and then it kind of narrowed to about 6 feet wide. The, it's just stone wall, stone wall, both both sides. But the stairway does continue but beyond. Is it like, sorry, what are they called when it? Uh, fuck, it's been too long. There's uh, no banister. Yeah. yeah. So they go in a staircase, goes like spiral staircase. Is it like a spiral staircase, or nope. is it like nope. empty? In the... it's it's straight, just straight down, stone steps. I don't suppose Could you can be. fly, Master, Master Dolan. That is that is beyond me at the moment. I, is there somewhere you need me to get, though? Flight might not be the only way to get there. Well, it might be easier or quicker if you could fly down. But Rob, given how old this place is, is there, like, dust or dirt, or is, it, is the whole place, like, clean as a whistle? Oh, it's definitely dirt and dust and it looks like um in places one every now and then like bits of rock will rain down and you know uh, so given that we're in ground. given that as uh, as our dragonborn friend said we're tracking these adventurers and we're assuming they've sort of come a similar way to us is there any signs of like people more recently than like priests in like bygone years having sort of passed this way Okay, that's a fair question. I'm going to have you make me a, um, you can make a perception roll for tracking, if you like. I don't want to give I, the impression that there's so much dust, it's like a sand on the ground, though, that would leave clear footprints. There's not that much. Can I use survival, because that's more specifically for tracking? All right. Okay, that's 14. Um, you think possibly? Yeah, like it's, yeah, possibly. Okay, so as Snowball's finished talking and I'm sort of like looking at the ground, I'll be sort of like examining the, the dirt and the dust, and then I say, 
if you look at these these marks here, they could be the signs of people having passed this way. But uh, since the, the whole place is sheltered, it's difficult to tell. It wouldn't have the same accumulation of dirt and dust that an outdoor temple would have. But these might be the signs of people continuing on. As I believe we should do. Agreed. Okay. Before we leave, might I inquire, um, Master Danver, what did you see when you looked through the eyeglass? As I said, an open cavern with the symbol of this god that we have been contending with here. Across the walls, nothing else of any interest. It's definitely an observation device for some form of ritual or type of activity that would be taking place down there. Mm, excellent. Thank you. Perhaps we could uh, push the device through into the, the room beyond, which should leave a hole in the wall. We could then perhaps use it to, we could enlarge the hole to enter into this cavern beyond, if that's what we wish to do. So, just as a reminder, the stairway does continue down past this mm -hmm. um, eyepiece and bends to the right. The hole in the wall is about two inches across. I, I, I guess what I was wondering, Denver, is you clearly saw this symbol of this ancient goddess. How did you see it? Was there light in the room? And if there is light, why was it not shining through the, the orb when we were looking at it? Well, there had to have been a light source, definitely, or I would not have seen anything. I could not see what that light source was. But yes, Mashema's image was on the wall, and it was easy for me to behold. So I'm assuming if we walk down the stairs, we will be led to that cavern, and then we can investigate further. Okay. So for light in here, um, you've just seen... Um, ceilings lit in places with this sort of dim off-white kind of light it seems to be magical and permanent but it's not particularly bright you've also seen uh, wall sconces um, for holding torches but none of them had any okay so i think we're going to continue down the stairs okay so you press on for about another 30 feet, 20 feet, and you get to the bottom of the stairs and it bends to the right. When you round the corner, you see a short hallway that ends in a door. Um, however, between you and that hallway, you see uh, a statue. Um, and it is the, it looks like two figures, one carrying the other. It's a statue of, um, a human male carrying what looks to be a dead or limp uh, female halfling in his arms and it's facing towards you. I'm going to uh, share a picture with you if I can. There. So between the corner and the door is where you see this uh, statue of two figures facing you. Well, it looks like one carrying the other. I, I cautiously, still with my sword drawn, start approaching the the statue. I'll be sort of tapping my sword on the floor as I go in case there's any like pit traps or anything like that. Okay. Um, you approach it. It seems very, very lifelike. Um, that's all I'll say for now. Now, were we given any description of the adventurers that came down here? Yes, you were. Do these do these two people, the, the statue, does it match any of the, the descriptions we have of the adventurers? Well, keep in mind, I mean, you weren't given photographs. You were just sort of word of mouth. However, um, you were told that of the four adventurers you were looking for one was a large male and there was a halfling female okay so given that the the halfling depicted in the statues we're presuming is like wounded in some way because it's like being carried or perhaps dead 
-hmm. Indeed. I want to have a look at the statue, see if they've see how like any wounds have been modelled on the halfling. So if it was an actual sculpted statue, there'd have been sort of like a bit of a limit on how fine they could have made the detail on the wounds. However, if it's like someone turned to stone, presumably like all of their wounds would be like rendered in like ridiculous levels of detail. Uh, that's, uh, uh, excellent. That's sculpt. What'd you say? Um, before, before I answer, it's 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 stone colored, right? Like yes. that gray grayish tone. Yes. See, and it's standing thinking, in front of the door. Indeed. What no, I'm it's about is, it's about halfway between the door and the corner. What what I'm thinking, Snowball, is perhaps the this is two of the adventurers who came down here, they may have fallen afoul of one of the more lethal traps of this damned priesthood of Beshava. And if there is something here that can turn people into stone, I certainly do not want to fall foul of it. No. So, and I'll examine the statue, as I've said previously, so I'm looking at the wounds. Sure. So make me an investigation roll. I use investigation as in you're looking at something and trying to put the clues together, put the information together. Okay, so that's a 10 for me. All right, so um, what is it you're trying? Oh, it definitely does not look chiseled. You were looking to see if it was chiseled. It, it does not look so. It looks um, very realistic. Another thing that occurs to you is that there's no base or plinth or anything uh, this statue sets on. It seems not very well balanced. It wouldn't take much of a push to knock it over. This does not seem to be any mundane statue. I can see no signs of a of a chisel or a or a plinth for it to rest on. I, I believe that what I suspected is correct. That these are two of the adventurers who came down here and were somehow transfigured into this. Yambagorn, how many were there? Do you recall? I do not recall offhand, but um, I, I believe Snowball is right, four or five. It was four. Yeah. Four exactly, with the number. Well, we found two. If we try and find two more, then our objective is complete. Half your objective. The sooner, good, the sooner we can get out of here, the better. Uh, Rob, can I ask you a question? Is the... Um... Are the clothing on the cre on the petrified? I'm assuming being still there, or is that stone as well? It's all stone. The, every part of them is stone. Weapons, things like that. If this is magic, is it permanent magic, or can we reverse it? Can I make an Arcana roll to you see? I mean, I know as a player probably, but I mean. I don't think that he would know. He's, this is beyond his magical knowledge. I'll hmm. be stood there when Snowball goes, if this is magic, and I'll like, raise my eyebrows, like, as opposed to the non-magical methods you can turn people to stone. <laughs> how, um, how would you use your arcane knowledge to make that determination? For me, it's as much like a history check of when I studied under my master, if it was something that I had learned about. Uh, that petrification, stuff like that, can be part of normal learning. Uh, whether or not I learned it or not is another. I, I'm not really that sure. Excellent, excellent. Uh, okay, so make me an arcane uh, roll then. Arcana note roll. Uh, Five is uh, twenty-two. You know absolutely this could be done by magic. Um, you know that it is permanent. However. Um, there is magic that can undo it, and probably the magic uh, person or whoever did this could would have the ability to undo it as well. <clears throat> uh, Dolan kind of stares at the at the, uh, the the now statues. He runs a hand across uh, the large man's face, and then he does it over the the halfling female, as if. Almost like he's checking to see if there's breath. He looks back. I believe the magic used here is quite powerful. And I don't think that they... Well, 
this type of stuff can be permanent. But it's also possible that whatever caused the petrification could probably turn it back and, and fix them. Or perhaps a powerful divine caster or some other spell caster can reverse it. They're not quite gone in those um, cases. Though moving them out of here is beyond my powers. I'm not really sure how we would do such a thing. Though if we do find the cause, perhaps we can convince it to restore them. I knocked the statue over. Well, there goes that. You're pushing it over? Yeah? Okay. Yep. You can do that. Okay, it falls over. Punk. Does it remain whole? Does it shatter? I'll say a little chip comes off of the uh, elbow of the human figure holding the halfling. And it kind of sort of rolls you know, to an awkward stop. M- Master Dolan is right. We cannot carry them like this back through this dungeon. And if we leave them, they are trapped in this living death. We don't even know if they are unconscious. The, the kindest thing would, to do would be to give them peace. We're not sure, though, even if we break them apart, if that would end their suffering. They may just fracture them. Imagine being in multiple different places, being in pain perpetually, but not being able to get away from them. Perhaps, Yambergorn, your quick thinking of smashing things is not the correct way to deal with this. I, I, I sort of like look at you puzzled and say, like, what, do you, what do you mean smashing things isn't the answer? Surely if we, if we smash the heads of the statue, then they are done. They will go right. to whatever god, deity they believe in. Well, maybe Having we should heart. just leave them here, and if we make it back to this place, and um, we can take it up at that point. I mean, what's five more minutes of suffering? Well, it's not necessarily something that we have to deal with. Once we get out of here and we defeat all the traps, they could always come back and take them out their own way. I'm not all sure. I can speak for is what I would want were I in their place. And I would not want to be left here as some... We don't even know what state they're in. They may be able to feel everything that is going on. They may be able to hear everything. They may be able to say everything, but just be trapped and unable to act. I cannot yes, think yes. of a more horrible fate. I agree with you, Yamba, but... Master Dolan does make a good point. If we contend with whatever force has turned them into stone, perhaps we can either utilize whatever power or possession or feature it used to petrify these individuals and bring them back. I suspect whatever is there, and he points at the door, did this to them, or at least prior, within this corridor, it encountered them and returned to those doors. So the question remains is, do we want to go inside and contend with that force, or do we want to drag this stone statue back up the staircase up to town? Either way, even if we choose to drag this statue, that is not all of the adventurers we have come to. Indeed. Uh, so. It seems that we must go through the door. I agree. So, he takes out his swords and he just starts to look at Yamagorn and, you know, just like, it's time to get busy, kind of like, and he says, let's go. Okay, so the four of you uh, move past this uh, statue that's now toppled over. Um, uh, just, everyone just a quick question before we go, yeah, go past. Um, hmm? in, in terms of the statue, how heavy is the statue? I would say very. Uh, I mean, it's solid stone, uh, one and a half figures, if you will. Okay, now I, given that, I given that I, the, I gotta the imagine there'll be hundreds of pounds. Given that the humans like holding the halving, I'm assuming that it's like only really like the person's hands, and then the like, halving on top. Is that right? Yeah, it's all kind of uh, it's uh, all contiguous. Okay, what I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the sort of bit where like the person's hands are joined onto the halfling, and I want to see if I think it's possible to like chisel the halfling off effectively, if you'll forgive the turn of phrase. Not perfectly, imperfectly, you could. Oh, that's good enough for me. Uh, you friend, can break the one. arms off the figure, whatever. Perhaps we don't. Please, let's not harm the statues until 
we've completed whatever we're doing. As a servant of light, I would think that you would want to take every chance possible to bring them back to this plane of existence before you smash them and send them to their maker. They've already waited a long time as it is. Perhaps another hour it would take us to complete this. Might not be that long of a time. Please, I'm, I'm not in, please. I'm not in you misunderstand me, Master Dolan. I'm not intent on smashing the statues. However, if we are going to be facing an enemy that can do this beyond those doors, I need a shield, and I cannot carry the entire statue. So, what, you want to use the halfling as a shield? But, if yes. you break them apart, this poor man's okay, going to have a broken I, elbow. Snowball will um, take her shield, unstrap the shield, and give it to Yamagon. Yes, ah, shield. Thank you. Now I do not need to chisel this statue. <laughs> Dolan nods at Snowball, thankfully, like just kind of gives him the nod. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now let but, us advance to this door and meet whatever threat lies beyond it. So, as you guys, <laughs> I'd like you all to make any perception checks. Um, can I say something to Master Dolan before we do this? Yeah, yeah. Um, Master Dolan. If we encounter any enemies, which I assume we will, can you cast that green flame at me to hurt me, if you will? <laughs> A wry smile goes over his, his, his smile. He looks, he says, yes, yes, I can. It would probably do a little bit of damage if you're going to use some sort of magic that I am also familiar with. And it would be quite effective, I think. A wry smile would uh, join Master Dolan's, and then he would just say, Indeed, thank you. Just give me the word, and I will do what I can. Again, thank you. Okay, so 18. if everyone... 18. Make a, yeah, 18, yeah. 12. What was the roll? I'm sorry. Perception. It's hearing. <laughs> I got a four. I am the worst perceptive person. It's because you're talking, you're explaining about it. <laughs> That's true, yeah. yeah I, joined you, I joined you with a five. <laughs> so, yeah. So we were chatting. Okay. So those who roll 10 or higher, you hear this faint uh, sound. It sounds distant, um, and it's sort of like a cry or a wail or a moan. It's hard to make out. You're just barely hearing it. I immediately lift my shield and sort of turn in that, well, snowball shield, turn in that direction with my sword held and start sort of like moving almost like a sort of slow, like marching pace with the shield held up towards where the sound's coming from, which I assume is behind the door. Yeah. This this isn't the first time you've heard this sound, if I recall correctly. You've heard the sound earlier in the dungeon. Yeah, here. here uh, yeah. 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 It's very faint. It doesn't really sound like it's coming from beyond the door. It's precisely, it's difficult to determine where it's coming from. So, question: Dragonborns are tall, right? They're not uh, large. Yeah, but they're tall, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, right? I think of them as like six to six six in there, something like that. I'm yeah, not sure. I, I think we're both pretty hulking, Dennis. Okay, so if she goes behind Yabagon and kind of put a one hand on his shoulder and readies her spear. Can she throw over him? Uh, yeah. So there are rules for this in um, in D and D. Uh, if I was just ruling it loosely, I would just say yes. But D and D actually has rules for this, and the rule is that you would get a partial cover, so you would have a plus two to your AC against ranged attacks, and you would be um, the target you were throwing at would have the same plus two to his AC, gaining partial cover because it's a partial blocking of your line of sight. That's cool. I mean, if um, so, that's like a whole feet taller, right? If he's five six and I'm six six, mm -hmm. it still okay. be partial cover. I'm still giving you the partial. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, since, since you've handily given me a shield as well, anyone who attacks anyone within like five foot of me now gets disadvantage because I like block it with my shield. If you use your reaction, correct. Um, so those of you who heard this 
moaning, wailing, whatever sound. Do you tell the other two? Because they didn't hear it. I'm, I'm assuming that like when they sort of like finish their little chat and like look around and like snowballs behind me with like a, a spear and I'm like there with the sword and shield, they'll be like, oh, some shit's obviously gone down. So as I see them looking across, I'm like... Do you not hear it? The, the same wailing sound we heard earlier. All right, uh, so... Um... Denver would, you know, he already has his swords out, but he would uh, like beckon Dolan to get behind him, and he would say, "Thank you." And Dolan steps up, getting ready. He maintains his uh, green flame uh, and stays close to uh, uh, Danver, ready to uh, flame him. Danver, I suggest you open the door, then you can duck behind myself and Snowball since we cannot remain fully prepared for whatever danger lies beyond the door, and open the door. Right. So um, I, okay. I would approach the door. All right. So the door, I will tell you, the door opens uh, towards you. Um, make me a perception check, Danver. And just, just to let you know, Rob, my plan is that as soon as like Danver gives any sign of like he's seen anything behind that door, my plan will be to like step forward and literally put my shield over him, and so that he can sort of fall back behind us. Worst rolls ever. I just rolled a seven. <clears throat> okay. Um, you're at the door. All right. I don't see anything. It's too. I don't know if there is anything beyond this door. I cannot behold it right now. Then fall back and let me have a look. And I sort of like, as Bradley Danver falls back, I'll look through the open door, relying on my dark vision to allow me to see further, etc. Okay, so there's a little bit of like squeezing by each other in this hallway, but you can accomplish that. Um, when you get to the door, I'll just tell you, it feels a little bit warm. I look a little bit puzzled, and I say, uh, "Master Dolan, there is heat coming from this door." A little. It, it is. It is faint, but uh, I, like I imagine, like my arms like brush the door or something. I mean, I, but but I can definitely feel heat coming from the door. What is what material is the door made of, Ralph? It's stone. Oof. Stone is not the most conductive of sources for heat. Obviously, it's why we line our fires with it, though it does maintain uh, a large amount of warmth once a fire is exposed to it for a long amount of time. I have trepidations about opening this door as I feel that perhaps flames may shoot out at us. Um, I think um, if one of us was to be able to well, withstand it, it would probably be uh, Denver, as I think that he has a way of dealing with some of that. Um, but for safety, we may want to move around the corner. Well, I am, I am fairly tough. I suggest if the, I suggest if we wish to follow your plan, that Snowball, forgive me, Snowball, I did not know the, the, the limits of your prowess, but if yourself and Master Denver wish to retreat around the corner, I will happily stand beside Danver as I've done on many occasions previously and face whatever flamey death waits for us. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so the elf is not flammable? No, that's. I think what he was implying was when we were talking about the spell that we were going to use before. Um, that's all. But I am definitely flammable. And I'm pretty sure you're flammable too, Manzi. Gives him a clap on his shoulder. Yeah, my bone. So, um, let's... I, I am flammable. However, it would take a fire of extremely large proportions to kill me before I could withdraw. Mm -hmm. See things back at the bees. Maybe we should go about around the corner, though. Just, you know, we, we played it safe so far. So let's pl continue. I, I, I will not cower around some corner like I am hiding behind my mother's skirts. Well, if the, the Master Arcane is correct, 
it would suggest there's a um, lot of flame behind this door, plus um, something that uh, turns flesh into stone as well. So, yes. <clears throat> and sometimes the mother's touch is the best, so she kind of pulls him back. I also let myself get pulled back because I'm more, beca more because I'm a little bit confused by what <laughs> Flavor has just said rather than anything else. And I sort of like, I'm a scent to being sort of like hauled back around the corner. So while I'm sort of going like this, trying to work out what Snowball was talking about. <laughs> as, so, as they're backing up, though, I'm going to, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to step forward and grab Denver by the shoulder. Not grab him, but just place my hand on him and just kind of yeah. whisper, one second, Denver. Uh, normally, um, normally I would have Lindell do this, but since he's not here, um, I step forward and perhaps there could be something with the door, magical or otherwise. Perhaps uh, I should look at it since our friend is not here. <laughs> yes, and I was also pondering the fact that if there is anything that induces or creates flame, perhaps you should throw a water skin at me. I, I do not have one, but if we have one, I can definitely do that to help you out. And Let me I, check my equipment real quick. One second. Uh, I think Snowball uh, gave him uh, a water. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Yes, I assume he hasn't used all of the water. That's right. Yeah. So uh, Denver would uh, hand uh, Dolan the water skin, and he would yeah, and he, he would just say he would just say Dolan throw hard. <laughs> You're standing kind of like this far apart. Dude. Yeah, I'm like I, I <laughs> first. I look at the door. I rolled a 14 investigation. And uh, and then I will begin to pour the water over. <laughs> so you're looking at the door for what? What are you looking uh, for? Specifically in this case, traps. I know normally I, Lindell would do this, but he's not here, so I will do it. Uh, okay. okay. Just okay. so you know, I, I just they were miscommunicating. John, I want you to throw the water skin at me while we're in battle. Not now. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> he, he starts pouring it. <laughs> no, 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 now, if you're opening the door, I just want to know who's standing where, when. Um, I retreat back around the corner and then smile okay. at everybody and close my eyes. Okay. <laughs> I'll be behind Snowball and hopefully... Well, actually, no, I think Yamagorn wouldn't let me get away with that. So I'll be behind Yamagorn. <laughs> uh, so who who is not behind the corner? Is anyone opening the door? Well, I was moved by Yambagorn while I was opening the door. So Yambagorn said that there was heat. Then Snowball went ahead of him. So now Snowball's in front of the door. So, yeah, so Well, you can arrange yourselves whoever you want. I just want to know who's where. And I if... think we've basically got Snowball out the door, Yambagorn right. just behind. Mm -hmm. Then we've got Danva behind me, and then we've got Master Dolan just running. Right, behind. exactly. Right. Got it. So who who's opening the door then? <laughs> Snowball. Got it. Okay. You've changed it three times. So that's cool. All right. So you open the door, Snowball. It opens towards you. You do feel um, a wave of heat, but it doesn't burn you. Uh, I'll just tell you the source of the heat in a moment. The room you're looking at is about 30 feet wide, perhaps 20 feet wide, 50 feet long. Um, there is a door on the far side of this rectangular room. However, about two thirds of the way across is a huge wall of flame between the separating one door from the other door. Um, near you, there is a uh, box, uh, a small iron uh, box on the floor. And it looks like it has a bunch of uh, unlit torches in it. I'll show you a picture of that in a moment. There's what you're looking at now. Is it possible to zoom the picture in a little bit, Rob? And yeah, sure. Sorry. And how does the box look? The box is just like a small iron box, maybe uh, a, f a foot by a foot by 
eight inches tall. Yeah, and but there's a bunch of torches. Like a, is it just a box with like a dozen torches, or is the box with um, three torches like levers? Or no, 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 no. It's like a loose box, of, like a uh, you'd have a bunch of pencils or pens sticking out of a can. Okay. Yeah. Well, those of you who can't see in the dark may as well take some of those torches. I suppose so. If, if everyone has entered the room, then Dolan will follow once they're in and not dead. Um, and then he will reach down and grab a torch and light it with his burning uh, hand. So, so it's definitely warm in here. Um, maybe uncomfortably so, but not damagingly so. I'm pretty much wearing just a loincloth, so I'm good. So it's like sauna, like levels of heat kind of thing. I'm going to sort of move a little bit closer, again, sort of tapping the floor as I go, move a little bit closer to this wall of flame, just to see if like, I can see through to the other side, so I can gauge sort of like how deep the wall of fire is. Right. So, yeah, you can barely see through it, you, you think you could run through it, but you would be exposed to flame for a couple of seconds. You would be like in flame, uh, completely engulfed. So I, I sort of have my, my hand on my chin and I'm looking at it sort of as I'm deep in thought, sort of peering at it for a few moments. And then I, I turn to my companions and say, yes, I believe we could jump through this. Well, uh, um, that seems a little premature. Um, can we at least look at the area a little bit? And uh, with that, Dolan will start walking forward towards the flame, not into it, uh, but getting as close as he can without actually burning. Yeah, the closer you get, the more you can feel the heat. And the, as I said, the flame is about maybe eight feet thick, this wide, this wall of flame. Uh, even a good sprint, you'd be in the flames for a few seconds. Uh, with that, just on a on a whim, Dolan kind of reaches out with the torch towards the flame, trying to touch it. Did everyone freeze? No. Uh, no, uh, I was waiting. <laughs> that was my pensive waiting pose. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lawford campaign is brought to you by D and D Beyond. If if those escaped from in here and ran all the way around the corner and petrified at that spot, would that su suggest they're being chased? You know what we could do? We could always lay the statue over the flames and run across the statue. Please, leave the statue alone. It is stone. Stone does not burn. Before they entered this dungeon, none of them knew that Yamagon had a statue feature. Anti-statue. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm all about that marble, baby. <laughs> the, uh, the flames do not diminish in thickness near the ceiling. Um, and you can see that there are, in fact, you know, like burn and scorch marks in the ceiling. But I'm, I'm thinking since they are out there and petrified around the corner, suggesting they came from this room, correct? And someone petrified them out there. Don't you think, as in with the other rooms, there's a way to disable the trap, the fire? There has as, to be. as they're saying this, I'm going to have a look sort of like at floor level, see if I can see like where the flame's coming from, because there's not enough just for it to be like a big pile of wood burning. So there must be some like aperture that the, the flame is coming from. Did anyone investigate so, the silver box? Just out of curiosity. It's an iron box. Oh, and, yeah, the iron uh, box. Yeah. Um, I described it. I don't know that anyone particularly... Yeah, I don't think anybody... I think you guys grabbed a few torches from it. Um, yeah, actually, did you tell us what happened when I reached out with the torch? I don't know if you cut out or you explained I, I did. I did cut out. Every now and then, when I have hangouts, my internet cuts out. For okay. Yeah, cuts I totally didn't hear seconds. anything. Yeah, you think When you, you see out. the swamp symbol comes up, you know that I'm, I'm gone. Um, so 
I got three questions to answer here now. So let me give me give me. What do you want first? Well, I think I reached uh, out first with the torch before anything. Okay, so you you what did you do? I didn't hear what you. So did. I walked up as close as I possibly could without taking damage. Hopefully, getting really close, and I extend with this my un- arm with the torch. with this unlit torch, right? Uh, it's actually I lit it technically with the green flame. Uh, okay, so it's lit. Okay, but, so uh, as you as you approach the um, the the wall of fire with this lit torch, it seems to draw the wall of fire into the flame of your torch. Like the wall of fire seems to diminish um, as your torch flame gets near the flame. <laughs> Dolan uh, looks over his shoulder and winks at the guys and then just kind of nods his head like, yeah, motherfucker, I figured this shit out. And then he's going to start walking forward. Hopefully he doesn't die. Uh, yeah, so the eventually the entire wall of flame kind of gets sucked into your lit uh, torch flame, and that is currently the only flame in the room. The wall of fire is no longer there. Well, we'll, we'll just stand and I got her jaw looking puzzled. How did you do that? I did nothing. It was the torch that did all the work. I just, it was the only thing in the room, and um, on the premise now that most of these traps have to be simplistic in a way so that anyone coming through could get through quickly without um, um, just being permanently stopped. Uh, the torches seemed like a common thing that was just there. Uh, but perhaps we may want to bring more torches with us in case this one burns out. I wouldn't want to be trapped on the other side without a torch. Yeah, she grabs a, a few torches and follows him. Sure, and in fact, you can see that near the door on the far side, there is a similar iron box that has about a dozen or so uh, unlit torches in it. So There's also it. a small uh, barrel of dirty water. He leaves the question of the petrified cobble. Hang on, hang on, she, she goes back. <laughs> she, she keeps the torches, so she runs back to the petrified statue um and um i guess rolls it over gently not yamagon style does are they carrying a torch uh no okay so she goes back to her, the group they're not carrying a torch <laughs> dola just stares as if expecting more words to come out of snowball's mouth <laughs> Can't get style, but why not? So, huh? I'm gonna Is have that... a look at the the door on the far side of the chamber. The door running. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, she she will just um, talk with herself. The the. The statues you discovered, I don't know if this helps you, were facing away from the door when you discovered them. You uh, you cross over to the other door in this room, uh, noting that the, the ground is hot, but not burningly so. Um, it looks much like the door you came through. I'm going to sort of wait until the other guys come across where the fire was and then I, I look back at them nod and then i'm gonna start pushing the door open uh yeah the door opens away from you you see a landing and a set of stairs running down so i'll slowly start making my way forward giving the others time to keep up and again, sort of tapping the floor and the walls as we go. And likewise, I'll be very wary of the stairs, given what happened previously. Uh, uh, Dolan will follow behind, giving him the light. And at the same time, he says, Yamagorn, um, do you hear that sound of the crying anymore? I, I Everybody can make a perception now. check. Okay, that's only an eight for me. Um, Dolan got a 15. Mm-hmm. 
Did anyone roll five or less? No, I got an eight. Okay, you all hear it now. Again, it's very, very faint. Um, it sounds like it might be coming from somewhere up ahead or deeper in. Like that you get a vague sense of direction, but that's it. And it's it's hard to tell what it is. But I will say that it makes all of you feel uneasy. Yes, I, I still hear it, Master Dolan, from somewhere up ahead, but faint, very faint. Okay, uh, th thank you, I'm going. I, I just wanted to make sure that we seem to be going in the right direction. I didn't want to miss some sort of secret door or something in the other room. Hmm. Good. Giving everything else is probably just a, a trap. Hmm. And Does the we'll flame... Does the firewall reignite re 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 once we leave the room? Um, how would you know? To look back? back through the open door. Okay. Um, no. It's not relit. Hmm. Well, she, she will take uh, one of the torches she took and um, borrow some light from uh, from Dolan. If it's okay with him, yeah, absolutely. Sure, he's got he's got a lit torch too now. I'll just sort of like look at that torch, just have it up, <laughs> and car carry on going. All right, so you guys are moving out of that room uh, down the stairs. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like so All right, everyone can make... the stairs as we go. Everyone can make a perception check. Uh, all right, you know what? Forget the perception check. Um, when you reach the fourth step, lightning goes shooting up uh, in front of you. I, I, I presume it happened like when I tapped the step in front of us. Correct. Otherwise, you'd be taking the damage. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll pull my sword back. I'll wait for the, the light show to stop. And then I'll again, I'll sort of wait for three seconds, tap it again. I presume lightning comes up again. Right. Who is last in this marching order? I'm guessing the wizard. Well, Dol Dolan has been following Yambagorn with the torch, but that I'll go in the back. That's fine. No, okay. Well, All right. If, if he's in front with a torch, um, Snowball will be in the back with the other torch to give us good lighting. Okay. So after this uh, lightning goes off, you look to the left and you see uh, of this landing, and you see four scratch marks in the wall, and it is indeed the fourth step that uh, that he had tapped that uh, did this. I was a little surprised; no one immediately looked for that. Uh, so that's cool. As paranoid as you guys were, it's difficult to think when Yambagorn is running through a dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he's a. Uh... He's trying. He, he doesn't have a 10 foot pole. I was surprised that John hasn't gone mental with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> it doesn't really fit with the character. Otherwise, I would have done. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for a few seconds, tap it again, see if we get lightning again. It happens. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep tapping it after shorter intervals, see if there's like a recharge time on it. Um, no, it seems to happen like pretty much every time you tap that step. Can, can, can't we just step over it like all the other times? Yes, of course. I'm just trying something. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach over that step and tap the one beyond it and see if anything happens. And nothing, hap nothing happens. At, at which point I will step over the trapped step onto the next one. Okay. So if I'm feeling maybe a bit of like, um, Ozone in the air, whatever you know. So I might have on my no, arm no with the static or whatever. Right, right. Um, it, you guys it, it proceed. Safe enough. Uh, you guys proceed uh, down these uh, stairs. Um, it's a little bit better lit now that you have uh, more torches going. Um, eventually, it uh, it comes to a landing and bends to the right. At the bottom of the landing, you see another stone figure this figure is facing um 
north. Um, it's almost it's almost uh, around the corner. You can just uh, make it out. Um, this uh, this figure is a tiefling. Well, I think we know what we have to do here. Snowball, pass me my rock crushing hammer. <laughs> And then sort of without my facial expression changing at all, I, I turn to Dolan and I say, I'm joking, of course. She, Dol she, uh, <clears throat> she shifts her, her warhammer slightly more behind her back, so it's not at her side. And pr presumably we know that, I believe there was a tiefling in the party we were looking for. Yes. Absolutely, there was a male tight, uh, tiefling. So again, I'll, I'll move up, investigate the statue. I'm presuming find the same things as previous. You know, it's not sculpted, etc. Correct. It also looks like it's in a um, a defensive com combat pose. Okay. Does the does the statue show any? If they've been fighting defensively, does the statue show any wounds on it? No. I'll say, point this out to the others and say, odd, if it is, this has all the marks of someone fighting or defending themselves, fighting for their life, but I see no wounds of any sort on, on the body or the, the upraised arms. If one were, and I sort of mimic the, the expression, if one was trying to ward something off or fighting defensively, I would expect at least the arms here to bear the mark of some sort of wound, some sort of damage, but I saw, I see no wounds here, nor did I see on the other statues. Unless the magical attack was unexpected. Uh, but if it was unexpected, it's... why were they raising their hands to defend themselves? Maybe oh, they, they, were... they were postured like that? My guess is they were attacked and they were fleeing. One probably stopped to slow down whatever was chasing them, while the human was carrying the halfling uh, away and whatever was chasing them caught up to them around the corner. Ah, then perhaps the tiefling's upraised hands were to cast some form of defensive magic rather than to defend against a physical attack. It's highly possible. Rob, is there any way that I can look uh, this making some sort of... I mean, if they're being chased and they're running away, usually when you run away, you're a little bit panicked, right? So would they have the whereabouts to avoid the traps, the lightning traps, the fire trap, and all that? This smell more like a, more, more more and more like a trap. I think we should leave. It's, I don't know what it is. Obviously, we'll have to figure it out. I'm still under the impression that they were fleeing from something and fighting their way back. Of course, we won't know until we finally find out what caused the the attacks in the first place. Though, yes. but Dolan, do you want to stay down here like this? I suppose. <laughs> no, and um, as sexy as I feel in this loincloth and belt, I would rather have clothes on if I am going to be permanently in a position like that. But I have faith that whatever we come across, we can take out. Uh, nothing has stopped us as of now. I am leaning more towards a caster or a creature um, than uh, a trap, per se, as if something was set off. Um, the, the halfling and the male uh, human uh, that we first met on the staircase, um, this distance is too far away to be encompassed in a, a spell that's being cast to encompass them all. So a trap is probably out of the question. Then you believe there is some sort of creature down here that has done this to the adventurers? Or, or a spellcaster of some sort, yes. Mm, troubling. After m Much as I value my own prowess in combat, what matters combat prowess against a creature that can turn a person to stone? Or uh, a magic user, as you say. Well, if it's a thinking being, perhaps we can communicate with it and make some sort of deal. And we don't have to kill everything. If it's intelligent, it might, might we might have something it needs. Maybe it just wants to get the hell out of here. You're right. We could we could talk to it, 
discuss what is going on. And then while we're talking to it, crush it utterly. <laughs> Dude, that was coming. As, as he says that, Dolan begins to smile as he knows what he's going to say at the end, but he just smiles at him and nods. It, there's always that as well. It is a good plan. Shall we continue? The stairs are cut out of the stone, right? Um, no. So there is rock that is crushing and pressing in on this place. It is not this, like the, it's very, very distinctive, that rock versus this structure. This structure looks like it was built and then at a later time, this rock was crushing in on it. Huh. Mm. Shall, shall we continue? Bef before we do, I believe Dolan was asking a question about this figure. You were examining it or something? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was um, <clears throat> trying to figure out whether um, the the way that his hands were being held, if that was like maybe uh, incar uh, incantations or some sort of magical uh, pose. I don't know if I can use my arcana or something to try to guess it. Maybe he was casting a spell or if it's more of a holy shit, something's coming at me. You know, I'm a do um, right, <laughs> right. It's closer to the ladder. He's actually holding a staff kind of at a, a diagonal uh, position, defensive okay. blocking position. Yeah, that <clears throat> sorry. this definitely seems like some sort of there has to be something was attacking him. Um, definitely not a spell. Or some, well, it could be a spell, I suppose, but throwing up your uh, staff to block something is kind of crazy. It doesn't make any sense. It's not going to stop a fireball. Um, I say we proceed with caution, like we have been. Good. Let us continue, then. Okay, uh, before we do that, can I just uh, ask for a short break? I've got to use a bathroom and I want to grab another coffee. So let's like take cool. a couple minutes, okay? I suppose we'll just sit there and play a bit of elevator music. That's what you need. Is an intermission thing? You come up, you can put it up in here. Yeah. Back in five minutes. <clears throat> it's kind of embarrassing. I used to work for a coffee company and had an arrangement with them after I stopped that I would get coffee and I'm out of coffee. Damn. Now I have to go down to the grocery store and actually buy coffee. Can't believe it. it it, it sounds like a catch trade out of like an old like Duke Nukem S game. I'd stand yeah. to kick ass and drink coffee and I'm all out of coffee. Well, I did buy like two big bottles of Red Bull because I'm like, I'm up early in the morning playing like Andre's game. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll save these two. I'll drink, drink one during Rob's game. Uh, I'll drink um, the other in the morning for Andre's game. No problems. And it was so hot yesterday. I've like nailed my way through one yesterday and I've got like half a bottle left that I'm drinking now. Is that a Red Bull? Like a yeah. giant size Red Bull? <laughs> yeah. Like one liter or something? What? I've never seen an energy drink that big. Yeah, yes, one liter, yeah. Holy fuck. I only have half a liter, no empty. It, it, it's, what, it's what I have to have on these like three like game weekends. <laughs> I'm just like, oh. I was like, do, doing this game now. Then obviously I've got Andre's game, which is like two in the morning or something ridiculous hour time. And then obviously I'm running um, Rose of West Haven for you guys on like, Sunday evening. So. That's that's why he's so hyper on Sunday evenings. Oh yeah, crits all around. <laughs> it's it's also why my character's so like curmudgeonly and like deadpan in like, Andre's game. It's normally like two in the morning. I've got like matchsticks holding my eyes open. I'm like, <laughs> what? That's why you make deals with undead creatures. <laughs> no, no, that was just a case of like, oh, um, if some sort of deal doesn't go down, we're all gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> And I couldn't think of any better way out of it at the time. 
So do you sleep all Sunday until we have the game, or I mean, how do you make this work? Well, well, well normally what, I, what I've previously done is I've had like a, a lie-in on Saturday, which I couldn't do this Saturday because I was waiting for like my Midlands expanded to be delivered by the post. And then I'll have a lie-in on Sunday, get up and do a few chores, and then like run the game. So I'll probably have a lie-in tomorrow. So I'll finish Andre's game, go to bed, have a few hours of sleep, and then get up. <clears throat> Well, remember not to mow the lawn this time. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's not. It's already been mown last week. It's not happening again. Just buy some Roundup and just whoosh, whoosh, be gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I say, the annoying thing is, is I've not actually got a lawn as such. I've got like some of that permeable membrane, like that plastic sheeting down, which I put down. Then I put loads of nice gravel over the top to like stop the weeds coming through into a nice gravel garden. Because, like, the guy next door's garden's so ridiculously overgrown, like, fucking the Amazon Basin or some bullshit, all the, like, seeds and everything from, like, the thistles and that in his garden just blow over into ours. So now that like, stuff's just, like, sprouted up between the gravel and whatever. It's, it's wonderful. And some people really want <clears throat> a nice lawn, and they can't, they can't make it grow. Oh. And you don't want it, and you have one. The thing is, it's not re it's not really a lawn. It's just like loads of weeds growing up amongst the gravel, and it's just easier to get the strimmer out and just strim them all down than it is to like pick them all out individually. Yeah. Uh, well, the wonders of gardening. <laughs> that's it, man. I'm all about that strimmer. That that's why we invented power tools. That's it. So I could spend ages going around with like a little fork and trowel, like pulling out all these weeds. Or I can just get my strimmer out and just like. Oh, this would be a good excuse to buy a flamethrower. I agree. Any excuse to buy a flamethrower. Do you uh, enjoy gardening, John? Uh, to, to be honest, I'm, I'm not an avid gardener. I, I do enjoy it, but. Um... Well, like I say, the, the problem we've got at the minute is because, like, my next door neighbor's garden is so like overgrown. All the like thistles, when they're sort of like flowering and they've got all the seeds, they all just come over onto our garden. So it's like you can you can spend like days sorting it out and getting it all nice and looking fine. Then like a few weeks later, you wouldn't know you'd touched it because all these like thistle seeds coming over and like growing up amongst everything. Yeah, well, but I, um, by the same token, but, the the guy who lives next door is like quite old. He obviously can't get out in the garden. He, he he's not been very well, so he can't like sort it out himself. That's what I'm saying, so, John. We should we should show up with a uh, white paper overalls and gas masks and flame drawers and go into his garden. Just <laughs> just see him in shock on his on his couch. Yeah, we're fixing uh, it for you. It's not the worst idea I've heard, Dennis. I'll be honest with you. I don't know if you've ever lived in the country. There are people who will, instead of mowing their lawn, because you can get some really big lawns out here because it's rural, they'll set fire to the grass on purpose. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know a few people who've done that. Cause I, where I used to live, we used to be nearer to the country, whereas I'm, I'm more in the center of town now. Sometimes the, uh, the flames get out of hand and fire departments have to be called because you just get these fucking idiots who set yeah, fire. And surprise, huh? they, don't even, they don't even that, monitor it. That fire gets out of hand. It's... Whereas what they really should have done is they should have just got Dolan with a torch to be like, <laughs> there we go, the fire's under control. Yep. Yeah, you guys got through that uh, puzzle pretty fast. Uh, I used I it once should... before. I think when we get and out, we should was... call him. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say the the puzzle before, the previous party I put this puzzle before, they tried putting water on it, and that made the fire bigger. That, that was my second joke. <laughs> what, do it's my, so my when you suggested right? dosing did, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my plan was, if they like, they weren't going to be like, oh, let's use a statue to make a bridge, which I thought that they probably weren't going to go for. My second plan was like, right, use the shield I've got as a bridge and like, walk over that. Yeah, you, you would have definitely taken some damage because it's not sourced from the bottom. But you would have discovered that if we'd gone further that way. Anyway, all right. So you guys, um, let me give you the next bit of map. Boop. You guys uh, press on past this statue. You see a long, uh, straight hallway. 
that eventually uh, dead ends with a door on the left hand side. And uh, I will show you what that looks like. It's a little bit chopped up there because I'm trying not to reveal what's beyond, but uh, there's a there's a dead end right here. This is a dead end like that. But note there's a door there. Okay, is there anything unusual about the door other than it just being like another stone door? Yeah, so you're going to have to be a little bit more specific. You, you're going up to the door, I'm assuming, then, and examining mm -hmm. it? Yeah, so, I'll, I'll be looking for any sort of odd apertures, any sort of marks on the floor, uh, anything that that's not just the door. And the walls, or any markings okay. on the walls, etc. Okay, so I will tell you that this door is actually uh, made of iron, unlike the other stone doors, and in very faint paint, you can see the symbol of Bishop on it, but it looks very, very faded. I point that out to the others and so I, I can see there is another one of these symbols here, obviously painted a long time ago but given that the past few times we've seen these symbols it has always heralded some trick or misfortune for us i believe we should be extremely careful and also this door is made of metal and not stone like the previous ones what that means i do not know and as i say that i'm going to just sort of have a listen like sort of cup in my hand like near the door so if i can hear any sounds from beyond you do. You hear this faint wailing starts up again. My eyes widen a little and I say, I can hear that noise again, beyond the door. The sound uh, gets slightly louder, such that you can all hear it. And it definitely, unmistakably, fills you all with a sense of unease. Like, it's like sudden. Okay, I'm just going to put my hand on the door and not pushing it open, just sort of like, just a little bit like that to see whether I think I could push it open or if it's locked. It is a latch and it opens into the hallway. So I'll sort of like hold my hand ready to open it and I'll look across at the others and sort of shrug my shoulders as in like, do you want to open it? Uh, Dylan holds up his hand. And whispers because he doesn't want to say anything loud. Yamagorn, yes. did you search the door for any traps or anything? If not, I, I can do it for you. I, I have examined it, but I'm sure you're. And, and I'm trying to. I'm trying to lower my voice a little to, to match down, but I've still got a fairly like booming voice. I I have looked at the door, but perhaps your your wizard's eyes will see something that mine cannot. And I'll step back and gesture from the door. I'd like, uh, before you do that, I'd like everyone to make an insight check, please. Yeah. That's a 16 for me, because bizarrely my insight score is quite high. Okay. I rolled a 22. <sighs> Damn! Good. Snowball and go. <laughs> I rolled 20, 22 as well. What'd you say you got there? I got an eight. eight. All right. So every every one of you, you're certain that this unease you're feeling is like sudden. It's like it's there's something unnatural about it. It's like so someone just flipped a switch in you. It's not like it's uh, your instincts. I mean, Snowball been uneasy this whole time down here, so... <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> it, it's, it's a definite jump, then, in intensity. Just uh, hurry up, Nolan. Nolan, with uh, the wizard eyes. Okay. Uh, Dolan, you're examining the door, then? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, my investigation was uh, 24. 
you see no uh, indications that it is trapped. It does appear to be a nicer door than any other door you've come in. Like, not so plain. But more work involved in its construction. Uh, Dolan turns to Yamagorn, just nods and then kind of shrugs quietly and then steps back into position behind him. Okay, so uh, given the go-ahead from Dolan, I push the door open. Okay, so it is a pull door. Uh, it has a latch. And so you lift the latch and slide the door open. So you can see it is, this room is not dimly lit. It's the first such room you've come across. I suppose the flame room wasn't dimly lit either. Um, that is brighter in color. The, um, let me just check my notes here. I'm going off of memory. Um, so the room is fairly large, probably the largest room we've come in so far. Um, around the walls are uh, paintings and uh, faded paintings and rotted tapestries. In places you can see, as with everywhere else, rock has pushed or broken through the ceiling or the walls uh, to some degree. Um, there are There is furniture throughout the room, some still intact some not so much as i said it's a pretty large room you see um a bookshelf with lots of books on it uh, i'm not going into too much detail yet i'll respond to your searches um, and the other thing of note is you see a stone figure an elven stone figure uh, against the southern wall facing north More statues. That fits with the others, and so that would be number four. Oh, great. We found them. <laughs> I'm with Snowball. Let's leave. <laughs> I, I, I will defer to your judgment in this matter, Damba. Um, I guess uh, we're going to... Um investigate this room, look at the books, or see if we can casually or slowly or secretively uh, look inside here and see what the hell's making this wailing sound. Obviously, we'll probably be ambushed, but I don't care. Let's go. While they're doing uh, that, Rob, Snowball yeah. will examine the door. It's like a double latch with, with like you open on one side of the door and it kind of operates the other side too. Like what um... I I presume basically yeah. you mean we don't want to be trapped in here. So you know, sometimes, sometimes you, have a, you, have, you have a, thread, uh, a shed, right? And you have an outside latch, but there's no latch on the inside. It's just a bolt. So does this bolt go to the entire door and there's a latch on the other side too? Uh, the door works from both sides. You can okay. The handle works from both sides. That answers your question. Yes, it does. I'm going to just give you another look at what you're seeing here. So as the others are moving in to like investigate, I'll just be sort of like covering them and keeping an eye out for any danger because I, I, I'm I'm not really the bookish sort. Oh, I've made a beeline straight for the library. Yeah, so um, I uh, I don't res I'm not you're not never going to get much out of me. I just say I look over the room for whatever. So I like specific things. So you're mentioning the book, and Danver mentioned, I think, the paintings. Is, am I correct there? Yes, I was definitely looking at the paintings. So the paintings, again, they're all faded and very old. They seem to depict all sorts of uh, minor sufferings or tricks played upon others. Um, you see scenes of like a guy with a whose cartwheel has broken. Uh, a house on fire, a horse with a bad leg, those kind of things. All scenes reminiscent of bad luck or misfortune. A Denver would whisper. Right? Denver, is anybody close to Denver right now? Yeah, you're in this. You're in this room. You guys. So are in this Dolan large lit room. So if Dolan is anywhere close to him, while Dolan is analyzing the library, Denver would uh, whisper, and he would say. Whoever is in here keeps trophies of omens and bad vents. This is an accursed room. Well, 
it, um, and he, he seems Dolan seems completely distracted by all the books in the book show. Well, it it could be cursed, but then knowledge is power, and how we use it, blah blah blah. You know, understand, Dad? Don't worry about it. Danvo would roll his eyes and continue to examine with care. Just continue to walk and, and just watch for anything to move within the room while everyone else is trying to uh, examine it. Okay, so I'll, I'll go through each of you. So Dolan, I'm coming to you next. You go over to the bookshelf. You can see that there are perhaps 15, 20 books um, on this bookshelf. Most seem to be, by just looking at the side, spines. Most seem to be about Bashaba. But there's a few books about Tamora, some just on fortune in general. Um, I will... Um, um, uh, there's a desk right there, right? I believe, or, or a table. Right there. there is no table right handy to the bookshelf, but there is a table near the southern wall. Okay, so there's nothing close, but immediately... Um, I will begin taking each book out and flipping through the pages, looking for okay. any inserts or anything in the books. And while everyone else is busy, I'm sure that'll take a little while. I'll get back to you in a second. Snowball, is there anything in particular you want to look for, check out in this room? Same question for you, Amagorn. <clears throat> There's something alive or undead that is moving around in the, in the room that is nurse. Uh, well, as I said, there is this statue uh, the, uh, against the southern wall facing north. Well, she's more um, concerned about what creates the statues. Mm -hmm. So while well, no, uh, <clears throat> those any dragons well, or you know, well, well, <clears throat> well, well, Dolan is uh, maxing out his library cards. He's gonna prowl the room and looking for anything hidden. Uh, all right, uh, Yamagorn, yeah, is there anything in particular you want to check out? I'm pretty much standing in the, the center of the room with sword and shield, sort of looking around alternately between like the blank areas of the room and keeping an eye on my comrades. The idea being is if anything does start going down, I'll be able to react to it and help either attack or defend my allies as necessary. I'm leaving them to get on with the searching of the room. Okay. So, uh, Danver, you you noticed that some of the tapestries are also similarly uh, painted. Uh, to those of the paintings, but there are also there's also frequent symbology to Bashaba. Uh, Dolan, sadly, the first you grab a book and it just kind of crumbles into dust as soon as you start to remove it. From no! the it just... And then he will do the rest. <laughs> if they start falling apart, he doesn't care. Yeah, they all just like pretty much dis disintegrate uh, under your touch. Um, I'm just going to look at him and say, shake my head and say, Dolan, sometimes crumbling everything isn't the answer. Um, <laughs> turns and gives him a stare, trying to burn holes through him. <laughs> uh, snowball. So you notice um, kind of out of the way on a, a small table, there is a, an old metal box. Um, it's maybe a foot by six inches by four inches tall. It has a big old lock on it. Mm. She's more concerned about anything that moves around. So um, she'll make a note of its location. OK. Um, yeah. The, that's that's the room. That's what you see. Okay. Then she goes back to uh, Yamagon or Daniel. I don't see anything hiding in here. Of course, I don't see does anything. There's nothing. I don't want to see anything hiding in here. Let us leave now. This is a place we, of death. If we could see something, then it would not be hiding, or at least doing a piss poor job of it. Well, there's a fancy box over here, but that's about it. Danver would be like, no, 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 don't touch anything. <laughs> Cut to Nick, where he's like, fancy back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Danver would just be like, the books, he would look, he would look around and notice that 
Dolan would be in complete sorrow that the books are the books are old, aged, not being used for probably hundreds and hundreds of years. The tapestries are an altar to death, mayhem, and bad omens. Whoever or whatever is down here is quite evil. And the only thing that is in this room that is substantial that we could touch is that box. I Do agree. you really want to touch that box? No, I, I don't. I want to get out of here. I agree. And <laughs> what, what sort of box is it? <laughs> here we go. Well, it's just around uh, those uh, shelves over there. Uh, actually, what you would see now is Danver like walking besides Yambagor, imploring him not to touch the box, talking really fast. Yambagor, I understand that you want to do this, but this is not the right idea. Please don't do this. And then they, they would just be like, Yambagor would keep on walking towards it. Yeah, I'll be sort of walking around. I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to have a look at it. Okay, so you see this box that he was indicating. Uh, it doesn't look fancy at all. It looks very plain. Um, however, as I said, it's about a foot by six inches by four inches tall, and it has a big old lock on it. Um, uh, Snowball, before is, a, you... Snowball is a barbarian from a, from a culture that doesn't have boxes, so all boxes are fancy to her. I got it. Not my um, <laughs> um, Now, before you can even examine this box, a figure appears in the northern part of the room um, facing you. This is a figure, it looks translucent, and uh, it, it looks, it's a female. If you could maybe picture a harpy, but without, but without the bird uh, accoutrements, it's humanoid figure. Um, it's gray, it's, there's really kind of no color to it. Um, it's female, definitely. And it uh, it speaks to you, and the voice is horrible. It's it's like nails on chalkboard voice when she speaks. Be gone! I guess I curse you all. Leave this place. Now that would strike me as interesting. Just you know, not it's a meta game, but the fact that we're actually being negotiated with to like leave and not immediately attacked. I would look at Dolan's response. <laughs> Dolan. How do you want to respond? Yeah, Dolan has kind of a look of uh, fear, but then more he raises his eyebrow, very elf-like, and kind of stares at at the creature in front of him. Yeah, uh, he, he <laughs> in a little bit of surprise, he kind of takes one step forward and bows, and says, uh, "My name is uh, Dolan Earth the uh, Second, Master of Magic. I." I came here uh, on, a, on a slight quest with my friends. And may I ask who you are? I am Biathu, and you are no worshippers of Beshaba. Well, she's got us now. <laughs> uh, 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 Lady Biatsu, and we did not want to um, intrude on you, but we were sent here to find these, and he kind of points at the statue. Uh, people who obviously came here to interrupt intruders whatever. Intruders who came in here. Intruders who did not believe either. And I curse them. Leave lest I curse you also. Right. Um, <laughs> he kind of looks over his shoulder at Danver. If he doesn't make any moves or anything, he'll just go back to speaking. Does uh, Yamagon look like um, like a predator ready to... Uh... To pounce, or does he look like he's okay? So Snowball will roll initiative and cast Sacred Flame on the hobby. Okay, I never said it was a harpy, but uh, you can make that assumption. Um, okay, um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have everyone roll initiative except for Snowball. You just go first. I'm on a sixteen. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this dice roll is horrible. Okay, I rolled an eight. Okay. Hang on. They changed stuff, yeah. 
Uh, Dolan has an 18. I'll put it on. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, so as you guys are speaking to this creature, um, Snowball bursts into action and casts this uh, flame upon this creature. What does this look like, Snowball? It looks like a, a little icy dagger flying through the wind. Okay. And she needs to make a deck save with 13, I believe. Okay. She makes no attempt to avoid it, and it goes right through her. Don't! Uh, Dolan. Uh, <laughs> shit. Dolan sees the flames come down, pass through her, and he says, Oh, shit! And he runs and jumps behind the, the table, hiding. Okay. Uh, you can now consider yourself to have a cover. <laughs> half half cover, yeah. Um, yeah, McGord. Okay, as this, um, I'm going to have been watching this creature intently. As the icy oh, yes. dagger of snowball passed through it, did the creature show any signs of like a reaction or none? I'm going to sort of take a couple of steps closer to it, so sort of not engage with it at the moment, and just sort of over my shoulder to my companions, I'll say, this could simply be another trick. But I'll sort of still have my shield up and my sword ready. Effectively, I'll be, like, acting defensively. Uh, okay. Um, Denver. Uh, we have not opened that box yet, huh? No. Okay. Yeah. Um, I open the box and see what's inside. So you're just going to turn your back to this creature that's facing you and go over to the lock box? I apologize. Did you hear? Yeah, I'm sorry. But what was that? I missed that last part. My volume went so down. You, so the way I'm picturing this, you guys are engaged in combat with this thing. Your turn, you're going to turn your back on it and go over to this lockbox? Well, I can't hit it, so I might as well see if there's anything in the I'm, box. I'm just asking it. what you're doing. I'm not questioning your actions. That's up to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll see if that's what I do. Okay, so you turn and you go over to this lockbox. It's got a big, fat lock on it. You're there. That's your, your move. What do you want to do with it? You still have Fine. an action. I uh, take my sword and try and break the lock. You okay? Um, roll me a d20. You need to not roll a natural one. 14. You smash the lock. Uh, do you want to open the box? Yep. It seems to contain an assortment of coins. Okay, so she screams at you. No, you will not take my treasure. Um, the oh, door that you did not see before to the uh, on the western wall opens, and she comes through. The uh, image you were looking at vanishes. She comes through, and with her are four foot tall demons sort of floating around her at about maybe a couple of feet distant from her. As, as they come through, anyone who's like stood in the yamba going just says under his rep, like, oh yeah. <laughs> so she comes uh, bursting out of this room and this wailing sound that you've heard uh, all throughout this dungeon now intensifies times 10. It's just like, what? This horrible scream she uh, goes through. Everyone must make me a wisdom saving throw. DC is 13. Oh, this will be good. Oh, 15. Get in. Wisdom is my jam. I mean, yeah, I'm mine. I need saving throw numbers, guys. I know I heard Yamagorn and Snowball, I think. 
Dolan got a 22. I rolled an 11. Okay, so uh, everyone who's not named Danver takes 12 points of psychic damage. Danver, you drop to zero hit points. You're unconscious. Boom. So, <clears throat> how much damage did we take? 12 psychic damage each. And you see Danver just drop. Boom. No wound marks. He's not dead. You're just unconscious. You have zero hit points, though. Um, and it is Dolan's turn. Oh, shit. Um, Cast something cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm known for my offensive capabilities. Um, uh, Dolan, um, looking around the edge of the table towards the, the new target, seeing Danver fall down, because he's actually right next to him, kind of, uh, around the table. Yeah. Um, he, he sees his breath, so he knows he's not dead, so he feels better, but he turns, gets back around cover, takes a couple breaths, <sighs> turns, and begins to chant holds out his hand, and a bolt of electricity shoots from his hand towards the creature. Uh, so I'm casting Witch Bolt. Uh... All right, so I just... Sorry, an inopportune time to cut out. I didn't hear what your action was. Yeah, so I, I spin around, and then from the cover of the thing, I, I launch a, a lightning bolt shoots from my hand to the creature. And seems nice. to just statically hit it. Nice. So I believe I make a dexterity roll. No, yeah, for me, this is actually a two hit. It's a witch bolt. Oh, okay. Rolled hit, then uh, you need a 15. Ooh, hell yeah. I roll a 24. Okay, so that's a hit. And when I do so, you can see that it ramps up for a split second as the energy flows through it. Nice. 12. Uh, 23 points of electrical damage. All right. Beathu takes 23 points of damage. She screams in pain. However, before she can respond, Yambergorn gets a turn. Okay, so I'm going to use my channel divinity to turn the faithless. So I present my holy symbol. Each fail fiend within 30 feet of me that can hear me speak must make a wisdom save DC 11. If they fail, they're turned for one minute or until it takes damage. Um, can you read to me which kind of creatures this affects while I look up? It's, it's fail save. fiends. Fey or fiends. Okay, so I have to. I want to look this up. Let's see what kind she is. Okay. So, um, I would say then that uh, nothing happens to her. However, the four little demons that were surrounding her, they yeah, flee. They just vanish. Okay, so as they as they're sort of vanishing, I step forward. I I brandish my sword, which has the, the holy symbol of Maliki on the the herald to it, and in a booming voice, I just be like, "Be gone, demons!" So yeah, they they literally just like as if blown out by a candle, like like blowing out a candle flame. Um, she just seems to be more enraged by your action. Uh, Snowball, you're next. Well, if she was pissed about that, she's really going to be pissed about this. <laughs> <laughs> so Snowball will go up and stand next to Yamagon, and she will look the Harvey, well, the Metro, uh -huh. in uh -huh. the eye, and she will cast whole person on her. Hmm. And she has to make a wisdom save, 13. What? Okay. Um, it's an enchantment. I don't know if that has anything to say. Okay, um, I'm going to tell you it has no. I'm going to tell you it has no effect. I did make a roll. I will tell you it has no effect. 
Okay. I'm not going to tell you why. I'll tell you later, but not yet. Um, so she is going to attack you, uh, Yamagorn. cast he is you cast it you roll it okay hang on okay so that's uh 12 15 hit points so danver you recover 15 hit points you are now uh no longer unconscious but you are just prone um i need everyone except danver to make me a dc 13 wisdom saving throw I'll say an 18 for me. Yeah, that's 20. Okay. And Dolan? I got a 15. Okay. So all three of you succeed. Um, so the, the effect uh, is fleeting. You feel the effects, but it's fleeting. Um, and the effect is suddenly struck with fear just from the sight of this horrible creature. For her action, she is going to uh, reach out and touch you, uh, Yamagorn, if she can. Um, what is your armor class? My AC is 11. Okay, so she got a 15. So she touches you, and just at the touch of her hand, your flesh starts to wither. And you take uh, 14 points of damage, necrotic damage. Okay, no problems. 14. And it is Danver's turn. Um, I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark on her, or at least use the skill of Hunter's Mark on her. And Can I, I am... assume you're going to stand up first? Yeah. Okay, yep. so I stand up, and then I cast Hunter's Mark on her. You done? <laughs> Which is a bonus action, I believe. Yep, and mm -hmm. I am going to yell at uh, Master Dolan to throw the green flame at me. I'm just going to say, like, uh, now, Dolan, now! Okay, and, that, uh, that's, right. that's a free action. You can take an action, if you like, um, before the next round starts. Am I within striking distance of her? You can move within striking distance of her. You've used a path for movement, but she is not so far away that you can't reach her. Is she is she within half of movement of distance so that I could strike her? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so um, I will yield my action to uh, in the initiative round, pending Master Dolan throwing the flame, and then my reaction will be to attack her after I take a, um, a reaction to a cast... Uh, elemental absorption and then i will attack her okay so you're not taking an action this round i'm, I'm holding my action you uh, can't delay an action in D D, and it's you're you're the last in the initiative round anyway so just to clarify i can't, I can't, I can't delay an action well you no, you're not allowed to delay an action in 5e it's not a rule what about a ready action for a reaction you can you you can ready an action to ready an action, you say, when X occurs, I will take action Y. That's but what just I to do. clarify, uh -huh. okay, so you're ready in action for next round. Got it. Yeah. Yep, that's all I said. That's what I said. Okay. Okay, now I just, just want to be clear. So we're on the next round. Dolan, it's your turn. She has touched the Yamagorn and started to wither his flesh. Um, what do you want to do? She's horrible to look at, but not so, so much that you can't do a something. A d question here. Yes. So, then what is at initiative what? Eight. Eight. So, does he defer his action, or does it come at 17 now? And then he gets he another took an, one at he, eight? He took an action, right, which is, which is readied right now for next turn. Yeah, but so that will trigger after Dolan's action, right? If jo if Dolan, I, I see what I see what you're saying. If he had come before Dolan, 
in the initiative. He would ready an action, and then when Dolan did it, he would immediately get his turn. But you don't get to move up the line because you're ready in action. If that you're answers. right. I wasn't proposing that. What I was proposing was ready in an action and establishing the trigger action to be Dolan throwing the yep. flame at yep. me so that I would then take the reaction yep. that, I, uh, that yep. I wanted. Yep, you're cool. I was just answering Dennis's question. We're on round three of combat, and it is Dolan's turn. <clears throat> Dolan is uh, now stood up. He's next to, well, not Dandron moved away, so he's standing. Um, He's holding out that little twig, and electrical energy is flowing from his hand directly to the creature still. He looks over at Dan oh, okay. and says, I, I must maintain the spell, Denver. I cannot cast it. And then I will just do the 1d12 damage that I can do uh, automatically with the do light. It. Yeah, you got it. Roll. I did four points damage. Four lightning Okay. Damage. And with she, that, uh, I move to the other corner of the room. She curses at you. Um, uh, Snowball or Yamagorn? I guess it's Yamagorn next. Then Snowball. Okay, so I'm going to swing more. I'm just checking something on my sheet. I'm looking in a moment. Uh, yep. Uh, yeah, she's one of the most hideous creatures you've ever laid eyes on. Okay, so I am going to. So dropping the dropping the shield down on the floor since so she's already got past the shield and I forgot to like include it in my AC anyway, so <laughs> dropping the dropping the shield down, I'm gonna grab my sword with both hands and just try and like, cleave the limb off that she's touching me with. Swing away. Uh yeah, she, it was a touch. It wasn't a continuous touch, but you can still oh, oh, yeah. attack her. Um the AC is fifteen. Uh, her AC is fifteen. Okay, let me just check my modifier or something. Plus four with my long sword, so that would take me up to a seventeen on my roll. Hit. So since I'm doing it two-handed, it's D10 plus two. That is nine points of damage to her. She has now taken thirty-six points of damage. Snowball. Mm, I'm just gonna sacred flame. Dex thirteen save. Okay. I got a 14 on the die. Um, and that's all. Okay. Um, she um, is going to point a staff at you, Dolan. And I need you to make me a constitution saving throw. The DC is 15. The staff looks like it's made of hard wood, and um, at the end, it's holding an eyeball. I remind you, you have inspiration points. You're muted, by the way. I'm using my inspiration, is what I said. <laughs> I rolled a six, but I'm going to use obviously use my inspiration to... I still get a hit. Ah, uh, you got a nine. You feel your flesh start to harden, and you feel yourself slowing down. Um, Denver. Uh, the, the reaction was not fulfilled. The trigger, trigger action was not fulfilled. That's correct. So you can just take an action now if you want. Okay. All right. So what I will do is, is the electrical bolt from the wizard still being cast against her? Yes. No, I think so. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's still being sustained. Well, when I take my half, uh, well, I can close the distance now to get to jump in front of the bolt of lightning and okay. take a, and I'm going to take, um, so that closes the distance between me and her. And what I'll do is I'm going to take elemental absorption and basically what you'd see is the lightning from his spell absorb and go into my body and then go nice. into my and then go into both of my swords and so nice. she has so she has hunter's mark and i get an additional d6 per sword so that's going to be 3d6 in addition if i hit her with my two swords and here's right. two two separate attacks with different bonuses as i i believe yes sir Yes, sir. Okay, go for it. So the, her AC is 15. 
This is also a good time to use inspiration. Okay. Yeah. Oh man. Of course, still has that stuff. Um. Yeah, I miss. Even with inspiration, I would have missed with the first sword, but with the second sword, I get. I hit her for seven plus one, which is eight plus three, eleven. Eleven and total damage. Yeah, that's okay. unfortunately that's all I hit her for. And you I lose now. Done. Oh, you, you take a little damage from that? No, okay. I use I lose it's his first level spell, so I lose a spell slot. Okay, neat. So you've dealt forty seven points of damage to her. So she seems racked in pain. Uh, although um, uh, maybe uh, the lightning has stopped hitting her now since you imposed yourself. Yes, sir. And um, she seems a, to be a little bit delighted about uh, Dolan. Um, so it is your turn, Dolan. Uh, you can make me a saving throw. The Constitution, you need a DC 15 Constitution. I'll tell you right now that basically you're trying to get three successes before three failures. Uh, each failure you get, your condition worsens. If you get the three failures before three successes, you're petrified. The saving throw you can take at the start of your turn, it does not count as an action. Jesus. I got a 14. I was muted. I'm sorry. Hey, that's not your action, but you, your movement, your skin starts to harden more, and um, you are now restrained. Your movement speed drops to zero. You can still take an action. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's going through his... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he he actually um, <clears throat> releases the twig that's in his hand. It kind of disintegrates as that's a spell component. Then he pulls out another twig, and then he holds his hand out, and he fires again another witch bolt at the creature. Okay. So he doesn't want to damage. Uh, well, he wants No to. problem. You got you to gotta roll to hit her, right? Yeah, I do, yeah. Is he a 15? From the 22? Hit. And I did 13 lightning damage. There's okay, you've class. done 60 points of damage to her. Uh, Yamagorn, you're next. Can I go first? Yeah, you guys have a tied initiative, so I have no issues with that. Are you cool right. with that, John? I'm absolutely fine with that. Okay, Snowball will, uh, <clears throat> since he's uh, seeing the effect of uh, the nasty staff, she will cast Guiding Bolt on the hobby thingy. And okay. she will use Inspiration because she needs to roll to hit. Go for it. And I don't want to miss. So, uh, what do I add when it's spell cast my Wisdom? Is that how eight. it works? Plus proficiency plus your spell modifier. Okay, so AC 60? 16? 16, not 60. Hit. Hit. And she takes 9, 10, 15 points of damage, radiant damage, okay. if that has anything to say. And okay. the next attack roll against this target. It has advantages because he illuminates. Excellent. She screams in pain. Yamagorn. So, sort of like grinning manically at Snowball as this illumination bursts out from the target. I swing my my long sword again, two-handed, at, at the center of the creature. She uh, wheels to point her staff at you as you strike. Okay, 19, 20, 20. Hit easily. 23. E okay. Easy hit. That is 12 points of damage to her. Uh, okay. Uh, she shrieks in uh, terrible pain. And as, I, as, I sink the, as I sink the sword in, I'm sort of like howling at her in orchestra. I'm trying to like drown out her screaming with my battle cry. 
She is not bleeding in any way, shape, or form, but you are definitely chopping her apart. Your your effects, your all, all your effects, accumulate all your attacks, are definitely hurting her. Um, you need to make me a constitution saving throw, Yamagorn. She points this eyeball staff at you. And, oh, constitution, um, that's my jam. You need, a, you need a 15 or better. And that is a 17. Okay. So, again, for you, the effects are just fleeting. For a moment, you feel your skin start to harden, and you feel your body start to slow down, and then it, you it, it passes. You overcome I, it. I sort of shrug it off. And I'm like, your foul magics will not prevent me cleaving you into two beasts. Ah! She just screams at you with this horrible yeah, and I like, oh! Okay. Okay. Denver. Okay. Um, so there are no elemental strikes hitting her right now. That's correct. Lightning nope. marking. There is lightning hitting her right now. Oh, so I still with I'm still within the beam. All right. So I spend another spell point to absorb elements. So I repeat the attack that I did before. You and, absolutely uh, can. Just for clarity, you have to move into the new beam. But yeah. Oh yeah, to totally. I would do. I would definitely do that. I would move into the new beam, and then as a result of that, I would take my reaction to use absorb element. You'd see the lightning go into my swords again, and then Hunter's Mark is still on her. So I yep. roll my two. My two. Now, just I read carefully, and I would only get the the lightning attack on the first hit. So I'm going to resolve that one now. Yeah, it only goes once per uh, so, round. Uh, and so for the first hit. It's I hit with an 18 and it's total yep. 11 damage. And then the second okay. hit, the second hit, I miss. God damn. Uh, okay. So she looks, uh, well, as I said, seriously cut up, but uh, she has not stopped moving and flailing. She kind of hovers about a foot off the ground the whole time she's fighting you. And it is your turn, Dolan. Uh, doling, knowing that he's not long for this world. Oh, you uh, got to make a saving throw. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Fifteen he, or better on the Constitution. He still knows that he's not long. Well, take take heed that Yamagon will take good care of you. Yeah, he he loves statues. You know? <laughs> Knock you over. Oh, oh, I'll take care of you. Bring off his arm so it fits. You. I'll take care of you. Uh, con save is oops. Sorry, plus one. Uh, the the stone creeps up Dolan's leg and covers his entire body. But at the last second, he kind of poses and looks up into the air. So that he has a very <laughs> elegant looking stone statue. Awesome. Okay. So Dolan turns to stone. Um, I thought he, he would go down and cover his line cloth. <laughs> a Yamagorn or Snowball, whichever one you want to go next. Um, well, if, if, I, if okay, you, I'm, if you I, I, with some healing snowball, that'd be very tricky. Who's going next? Side fast, really? it's combat. <sighs> so, snowball, you can go first, whatever you decide to do. Yeah, fuck it, she'll do it again. We can always heal later, hopefully. Uh, all right. Inspiration again. Okay. Oh, that's good. Uh... 14 plus 5, 19. Hit. And big money. 20 points of radiant damage. 20. Okay, so she's with a final scream. Ah! She kind of um, shrugs, shudders, and then to the ground. Oh, cool. Oh, and then she's still. Her, the staff she was carrying clatters from her hand and falls to the ground. And then she runs to the Tony oh, statue. Um, I'm going to sort of like pick up the staff where it's fallen to the ground and sort of look at it. So it's an intricately carved staff. And at the end, like three sort of thick branch, almost like fingers, are holding an eyeball facing outward. I, I, I sort of turn around to the others with the staff and I'm like, Dolan, what are you making? Oh, oh. Okay. 
Dolan White said that he wasn't stone, but yeah. Had, Dolan said that. Had you been blind and deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned, I, I had you, but petrified? Yeah. Is, is there any, also like holding the staff, I'm like, is there anything we can do for, for Dolan with th this? I do not know how such things work. Uh, he did say that the one who did it might be able to reverse it. I don't know. But she kind of looks at Dolan standing there looking if, all. As you say, Snowball, if, if it were a, a disease, I could, I could do something, but. And I, I'm going to walk, I'm assuming it's not a disease, so my, my sort of lay on hands, which I can just be like, boom, you're cured of a disease. I'm going to try that. I'm not expecting it to have any effect, but I'll put my hand on him. I'll spend five points of my lay on hands to like cure a disease, see if anything happens. That has no noticeable effect. Yeah, so I'll put my hand on him, I'll concentrate for a bit, and I'll say, oh, that's it appears, whatever, whatever has transformed him in such a way is impervious to... Well, the powers granted to me by Maliki. Maybe, and this is like a, a long shot, we could squash the eye and hope that will release the holding magic. I said hold the staff off of this. I said you wish me to break the staff. Well, maybe the eye, not the staff, but... The, the eye think? is part of the staff. Well, <clears throat> what do you think, Denver? You, you seem to be more... Well, it would be magic that would undo the magic. If we destroy the eye, we might seal them in their fate forever. However, we may break the curse if we destroy the eye. It's 50-50 chance. I look a bit confused. I'm like, do you wish me to break the stuff, man? <laughs> yeah, you just, no. you just, you said, <laughs> if we break it, they could be stuck there. But maybe we should break it. No, I didn't say that. I said there were two uh, options. It was I, a 50 /50 chance. <laughs> well, <clears throat> she goes over to the the box and takes up a coin. Head or tails? Heads. And she flips it. <laughs> so we're going to oh, roll a die, and if it's uh, even, we'll crush the eye. Is that cool? Yep. That seems fair enough to me. We're crushing the eye. All right. Right. So I'm going to try, try and break the stuff. Okay, you succeed. Um, when you do, you feel energies being released, pouring out from the staff. Uh, both the elf and Dolan return to normal slowly. And that's a howl of pain up the stairs for someone who lost his elbow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, I'll sort of like, I'll, I'll walk over, like, still holding the broken bits of the staff in case, like, Dolan wants them as he wants his recorder. So, no, I knew breaking the staff was a good idea. <clears throat> yeah. Do we remember what the original commission of the first four adventurers was? Their uh, task was to bring an end to explore this area to make sure it's not cursed or does not have bad luck, and if it does so, bring in an end to it. Your task was their task plus find them. Well, okay. as far as I remember, we have, we have found them. We have cleaned out all the enemies that are here. We have mapped out all the traps. Our job here is done. Yeah. <laughs> um, see, see hunger is down. Uh, uh, no, she goes over. And when he returns to his flesh self. Mm-hmm. So he kind of leans in and tries to take take his pulse. Are you okay? Uh, 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 oh! <laughs> uh, I'm okay. I, thank you for saving me, Snowball. While we're doing this, I'm going to have a look in the room that the, the creature came from. Sure. I'm going to describe that to you uh, in a moment. The elf... Um, who was turned back to flesh. He looks at all of you with a sort of shocked expression on his face. He looks at the fallen creature, Biathu, on the ground, and then he uh, approaches you, Danver, and uh, he expresses, I, I am extremely grateful for your aid. Who are you? Where did you come from? 
I am Danford Damaris, and these are my allies, Yamago and Dolben and Snowball. We have come to come rescue you. You must get the others that you came with. They should no longer be petrified. You found them then. They fled. I tried to hold her off. You were successful to a point, but they did get petrified. She, he's speaking to you in Elven, by the way. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> while you guys are having this conversation, I will tell you that in this other room, it's um, slightly nicer uh, condition. Um, there's a few paintings on the wall, less faded than the other ones. There is a single table with two books on it, one of which is open. A pile of rotted-looking clothing, a fairly large pile of rotted-looking clothing is in a corner. There is a lit candle next to the open book. So uh, as I'm going in, I'm going to like poke my sword into the, the pile of clothing and see if it's anything in it, and I shout out back through the entrance. Dolan, there's some books in here. When he's doing it, someone will get the, the fancy box with all the coins and kind of put it... Oh, at uh, Dolan's feet. Hopefully, that will cheer him up. He seems to like coins. <laughs> and maybe the the shout of books might uh, do something for him too. Um, if everyone would roll me a d twenty, and then I just want a total of those four rolls. So that's fifteen from me. Fifteen for me. Thirty. Six for me. 36. 15 for me. 51. That's how many coins are in this uh, box. Um, Gold? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Gordon, you, you just like poked this pile of clothing? Like you. Yeah, just, I'm, I'm like, just sort of like you... moving the clothes out of the way with the edge of my sword in case anything. Oh, can okay. So um, one thing that stands out to you is among the clothes these rotted clothes, there is one uh, piece of clothing that isn't rotted at all. In fact, it seems to be in very fine condition. What, what sort of clothing is it? Nine it's a, like a traveling cloak. Oh, sweet. I'm putting that on. It's okay. a magical it, loincloth. Uh, it, it seems to fit well. Now, then I'm going to scoop up like the two books. I like, um, I'll put a piece of cloth in like the book that was open to keep its place. I'm going to walk out um, with this cloak. Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, before you do anything to the books, uh, Dolan, did you want to take a look at these books? As I said, there is um, there's actually a lit candle next to one of to the open book, and the other book is closed on this table. Yeah, I mean, Dolan sees the chest, is still stiff from whatever magical energies that are in him. He sort of stiff leg walked uh, over towards the room. Saying, don't, don't, don't touch anything. Don't wear anything. Don't do anything, Yamagorn. Don't be. I, I imagine, I imagine as he walks around, <laughs> as he's wearing his cloak on. <laughs> cloak. <laughs> uh, with that, I, I just kind of smile, and he's not dead, so whatever. <laughs> and I'll go over to the books to examine them before he breaks them. So the book that's open uh, seems to be dedicated to Bashaba. It has like a bunch of prayers and. Uh, things like that you would say to her. The other uh, seems to be a book of curses. It's all about curses. I would like you to make me a perception check, Dolan. You're muted if you're talking. Sorry, I was setting the thing. I got a I got an eighteen. Okay, so you notice that this candle um, is has no drip marks whatsoever. It seems to be like perfect, like a brand new candle, although it is lit. I will. Uh, does it radiate heat when I put my hand near it? None. None at all. Uh, I sort of smile and uh, having nowhere to put anything, he picks up the candle and then closes the book, grabs the other book, and then walks out into that main room uh, to be with his uh, companions and friends. 
okay, in um, the closed book, you can you feel like something inside. Like when a book doesn't close properly, you can it's noticeable. And uh, when you see what's causing this, there is a a scroll sort of folded up inside this book of curses. Uh, Dolan places everything back on the table and immediately unrolls the top of the scroll to read the title. Right. So it's actually not rolled up. I don't know if yeah. it still calls, counts as a scroll, but it is yeah. folded. Yeah. Um, when you look at the writing, it blurs and twists uh, under your eyes as uh, you know magical writing to do. But this seems to be of a divine kind of magic. You can't read it. Uh with with a, a sigh, because you know it's not useful to me. <sighs> I take it and once again scoop everything up, bundling uh, like I'm in college with a bunch of books, and then I run over towards um, a snowball and and hold the scroll out towards him or the folded paper that's a scroll. Her, her, sorry, um, sn snowball. Um, perhaps you can read this. It's beyond. It's not arcane. It, it's not something that I, I had yet, anyways, can read. And I hold it out. Um, yeah, let's see. Except, did you say we shouldn't read or touch anything? Well, <laughs> well I'm sure. <laughs> Only two books and a candle and a scroll. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I assume that you're trained in how to cast spells, and just reading the title doesn't normally set it off unless it's ruined. And, uh, uh, um, I mean, I'm not worried about that. I've already looked at it, so I would be dead. So. Okay. Um. See, very carefully, uh, scrolls it open. That would so yeah. And read the line. It's a, it's a divine spell. Um, and it is a bestow curse. Fifth, it uh, cast at fifth level. It seems you <laughs> can um, you can curse someone with this paper. Yeah. Being magically knowledgeable, you would know that uh, to activate it, you would read it aloud, and that would also consume it, the magic in the, in the scroll. Yeah, Snowball is more like an um, idiot savant when it comes to casting than actually skilled. Right. If it wasn't divine magic, I wouldn't have told you that. But this, uh, you're a cleric, and it is divine. So. Uh, this, I don't you're, think you're this is... A... I've got at least 50% of that down. <laughs> Uh, I don't think uh, this is not this is not good magic it's it, Snowball don't look at it that way it's something that can hinder your opponents it's how we use our magical powers that dictate whether it's good or evil I don't think it's in and of itself it's an evil spell I'm sure it might have some necromantic powers involved, but it's really just to hinder um, any enemies that we face against, and it could be a boon. What's a little necromantic? Necromancy between friends. Dolan. Maybe, Dolan. Um, I mean, can you can you read it, Yamagon, and see? Answer to him. In, In fact, you book. you can it. it almost hurt your eyes to look at it. The words sort of blur and twist. You try and make sense of them, and like you don't enjoy looking at it. It almost gives you a headache. As a divine caster, can I actually like read the same thing? Or oh, I even forgot that. Sorry, forgot you're divine. My bad. Yes, yes. I uh, yeah. I, I, it takes me like a long, long ass time to read it. You see, like tracing the words with like, my finger or my tongue sticking out a bit like. And it's and got say, that yes. uh, magical writing quality where the letters, the writing almost seems alive, you know? I, I pass it back to Snowball after a few minutes. I'll be like, yes, you are right. It is for it is for cursing people. Okay, well, I, I, I suppose we could keep it. I don't know how we're going to get paper out to the water, though. We Surely, um, Master Dolan has his... Uh, his pouches that he brings his uh, ingredients in. Some of them will have been used. Surely he could fold it and put it in well, one of those pouches. Yeah, or we could like cut up some of our water skin and put it in there and maybe. I believe Master Lindell has a way to secret stuff 
on his person or in his person where they don't get wet. That's how he carries his notebook around. I'm sure he has. <laughs> she will she will hand the scroll to him. Okay. I have no problems with that. So Ma Andrew, Dolan. this uh oh you go ahead. Sure. Master Dolan, would you mind looking at this cloak I'm now wearing? Amongst all the rotting clothing inside that small room, it alone was untouched by the passage of time. I believe it may be magical, but that is your field of expertise, not mine. Um, Rob, I, I move forward and begin to uh, wave my hand over it. And normally I would use this as a ritual, but since uh, I am, Dolan is totally exhausted, he's actually going to draw on his magical energy to cast the tech magic on, which actually lets sure. him affect everything in the room, I guess. So, right. The way I um, describe the tech magic is nothing in the room uh, changes. Rather, you kind of get a second sight. And so just to your eyes, you see things with like a glow or an aura, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So everything that you know to be magic in this room, anything anyone's wearing that you know to be magic, would glow as such, um, including this cloak. Um, <clears throat> you notice as, as uh, Dolan's eyes are glowing with a, a sort of spectral energy, he looks up at you. Uh, it might be a little creepy, as I think the iris is, his eyes go totally white when he's doing this. Yamagorn, yeah, it's definitely some sort of magical uh, cloak. It would take me a while to figure out exactly what it is. Um, perhaps when we leave here, I can look at it for you, uh, if we have time. I, I clap you on the shoulder. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> and, and, and might I once again caution you that when you find these items, perhaps not putting them on, using them, looking at them, reading them, drinking them, or anything, in fact, besides just leaving them where they are may be the most appropriate form of action where I can come over and help you. I would hate to see you turned into a toad or blasted into another universe. Just a warning, my friend. Indeed, but the, the, my policy of wearing things I come across has served me well so far. Right. Well, um, yes, I guess Timora is on your side today. So, Danver, this elf um, you're speaking to, he tells you his name is Venequil. And, um, again, he expresses his gratitude. He seems to be primarily expressing his gratitude to you, not really barely even acknowledging the, uh, the others in the room you in Elven. He also sort of casually mentions, <laughs> yep, he also sort of casually mentions that perhaps uh, he needs to take a break from adventuring, but he's more concerned with uh, rejoining his companions. Has the danger passed then? Can we finally leave this place? I mean, do, do they chip along in Elven? I assume they do, since there's no They're else. speaking in Elven. Yeah, they're yeah. speaking in Elven. Um, so Danver would say, um, we must leave in haste. Let us find your friends and depart. This place is done. Yes. At this, yes. At this point, in, I'm going to butt in, in Alvin and say, yes, uh, let us leave this place. I agree, Danver. You get a, a glance, but little more. Um, Venequil's Yes, let's do so immediately. Let's gather my companions and oh, and your, be your friends. Here. And Snowball takes off and goes, uh, uh, jumps over every fourth step up the the staircase to the fire room. <laughs> um. So let's just suffice to say that you guys uh, make your way. Uh, back out, uh, knowing how all these traps and uh, things work now. You pick up a torch and you absorb the fire. The other three you encounter along the way are um, are back to flesh. Although the um, the the human male uh, Barbellos, his right arm is now misshapen, somewhat misshapen. And he's holding it awkwardly. 
as I go past him, I'm just going to put my hand on his arm and I'll use the lay on hand sting a little. Um, okay, you you can cure his his wounds, but it's going to take more powerful magics to remove the permanent or semi-permanent deformity he has now. But uh, before right I, now. I mean, I guess Snowball recognize his movement. No, no wait. Oh, we why should, do you should... want to heal this person? Yeah, no, we should set it first, I guess. And he... there, there are no more. There are no broken bones, but when he was reverted back to flesh, it just kind of didn't take right. It's like misshapen now. It's yeah, and it's not going to be nice. But what he's going to do is kind of break his arm again, and hopefully <laughs> that new wound would override the old wound when it gets healed. <laughs> I have a fairly high skill in medicine, so I will assist Snowball in this. Um, okay. Uh, it's probably going to take some kind of like surgery or flesh melting or something. Like I'll get the the arm, it's not just a weird bone. It the arm is a broken bone. The arm is is kind of weird now. It's is there a piece a of flesh on the ground? <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go, my friends. A little bit of regeneration. And anyway, let us away from this foul place. In any case, there uh, the other three are very uh, grateful for your uh, your help. Um, you guys um, make your way out back to the entrance of the inn, and um, you encounter Gorvis, who is delighted to see you. You you did it! I oh, oh I'm so glad. Uh, the others they, they all seem fine. Uh, what happened? Well, it's an interesting tale, and we'll tell you. But if first you wouldn't mind giving me my armor and shield back. Oh, of course, of course. Your all your stuff's right there. Is is been moved or touched? I, I sort of I start redressing myself. Obviously, putting the cloak on again as well. Give Snowball her shield back and say, "I'm sure, I'm sure Danva could explain it far better than myself." Of course, being a the, being a dwarf, there will be a small storage fee. <laughs> um, no, rather he pays you the. Um, I don't know if he's paid you guys yet. I think he paid you half in advance. I believe he promised you two hundred gold if you were successful. Uh, I think it was the guy who has his wife lost. That pays us half. Yeah, it was. Okay. So in any case, Gorvis uh, pays you 200 gold to the group um, for uh, your your services. And the uh, Barbellos, the large human with the slightly deformed arm now, he says in a deep voice, and to the inn, we need drink and celebration. And I think... Uh, an expression of gratitude to our saviors. I'm glad to no longer be a statue. And some uh, homemade surgery. All right, so uh, a bit of an extended denouement here. You guys return to the Golden Nest Inn. Uh, you can add 40 gold each to your total. I think that includes 40 for Lindel. Um, and you return to the Golden Nest Inn um, where Yato, the smiling gnome, uh, runs the place. Um, you sit and have drinks with uh, this group, Barbelos and Safi the halfling and Kola the tiefling. The elf in male pretty much just speaks to Danver directly. He assumes that you are in charge of the group, that you're the leader. Um, but over drinks, uh, which they pay for, they um, exchange tales with you of adventures they have had, and they tell stories of exploring a, t a tomb and being attacked by undead paladins and stuff like that. But, um, you know, you guys kind of go back and forth with this battle stories. Um, near the end of the evening, after much discussion, Venequil, Venequil, uh, Benicol tells his uh, his companions and 
Danver directly that he is going back to the five forests. She wants to visit home again, and he is grateful. And to you, Danver, he gives you his weapon. Uh, now, you're using two swords? What, what kind of the weapons are you using? Um, I'm using two short swords. Okay, so he gives you a, um, a rapier um, that is of fine quality. He presents it to you like, like this, um, handing you this, uh, this fine rapier. Danver uh, takes it and bows. Yeah, he bows uh, gracefully. And he says, the forest of Maris, thank you. So before he leaves, he asks if there's uh, anyone you, uh, you want him to look up or get a message to or anything back home. Yeah, I would tell him to inform um, my father uh, that, uh, what's the name of this town again? Because I was reading. You are in Burnsley right now. Burnsley, and this is the town that the orcs were seen passing by, correct? Passing through. Through. Okay. So I would just let him know, tell tell him to tell my father that the orc um, logistics had passed through Burnsley, but had not necessarily stayed at the docking city that we started at and here. So at some point in time, they've been moving equipment through these towns, but not necessarily doing any dealings with the humans or anyone within. Do you want to tell him this message verbally, or do you want to write it in a missive to deliver to your father. In other words, do you want see, him yeah. to know this? Right, yeah, yeah. Call. You know what? I would I would actually write it. You're right. That seems a little bit more safe. So I would write it and seal it and okay. uh, give it to him and say, give this to my father. Okay. So the uh, other three, they drink with you long into the evening, slowly, you know, taking their turns to go to bed. Barbellus goes last. And one thing he does, he says doesn't seem right that we got paid for a job we didn't do. It was a job you did. So he hands you guys over a pouch full of 150 gold pieces. And, uh, that is what we were paid to go in there. It is yours now. And uh, with the last <laughs> empty of a glass, he goes off to bed. So you guys get another 30 gold pieces each. Uh, Rob, I get two questions. Uh, yeah. One the 51 gold that we found randomly. Yes. That added, or should we add that? Or yeah, so? divide it, keep okay. it yourself, however you want to do it. Get 10 gold and one, two silver from that. My other question was, would there be any, Kuloth, the Typhling, whatever his name is, Quayloth? Um, is, Kulog, is, yeah. Is he, um, is he a mage? Uh, no, uh, he's a rogue. Is any of them a mages? Ven uh, Venequil, the elf, and elf was. Oh, and he's not going to deal with me. Okay, that's it. Um, so uh, you guys drink you uh, for free. You fill up on your meals. Uh, you get a few of the townsfolk have certainly heard about your exploits and what you did in the dungeon, and you're getting pats on the back and uh, you know congratulations and people buying drinks for you, things like that. So you definitely have your fill before you all. Uh, go to bed sometime in the middle of the night you are awakened maybe after four or five hours of sleep to a commotion downstairs in the inn so each of you have awakened in your rooms and um, you hear like some voices talking in a you can't hear what they're saying but it's clear from the tone that it's sort of Frantic conversation, hurried conversation. Where's the conversation coming from? Downstairs, the main room downstairs. Okay, like I'm you. gonna put my I'm gonna put my ear to the floor, see if I can like hear it a bit better. Uh, okay. What What about the rest of you? Uh, Dolan gets up, and uh, he is still stiff from the magic. That still probably. Uh, lingering in him. Uh, he stretches and then uh, thinking about the sounds of arguing, he immediately starts to put on his clothing and grab his gear, including his backpack. Okay. Uh, anyone else want to take similar actions? Yeah. 
I mean, worried it might be Lindell who uh, got into an argument with someone again, and knowing she better be there if it is him. So she'll grab her hammer and shield and go down. Okay, and um, I think uh, I think that's where we'll cut it off right there. So something has woken you in the middle of the night. Hurried voices downstairs in this inn, and uh, we're going to stop the broadcast. So. Thank you all to any who uh, have watched or will watch this, and we'll do it again in around a month or so. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Rob.